Thanksgiving. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Thanksgiving, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, November 26, 2013. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank and we note Chris Mazza from the reminder. Our first appointment at 6 p.m. this evening is our illustrious police chief. Mr. Mellis, would you like to come up? It took me eight years to beat you. How are you? For the small cash payment that we're not just doing it. Say they know you need to get the bed before. I didn't hear that. out of your bag. How are you tonight? Good, thank you. Look, you've got a few items. Yes, sir. Uh, the first one being the civil service update. Yes, uh, we finally got a certified list. Uh, Nick was instrumental in trying to shake the tree and get it rolling here. Uh, we need three candidates for the one position to interview. Uh, I believe there's about 10 names on there. And, and of, of those names, there's a lot of them that are uh, relatives of a line of duty death, which automatically goes to the top of the civil service list as well as the uh, disabled veteran. Uh, to date, I think we've had three people come up and sign that they're interested, signed with the board, and they come up to the station and pick, pick up an application. The speed in what we're trying to accomplish here is we have an academy that's due to start at STCC on February 4th, but there's a process involved. They have to have a physical agility test, they have to have a medical physical, okay. they have to have a psychological. The physical agility test is run by the state. Once they get the medical clearance that they're, they find them fit to go to one of these academies, they physically go down to Hudson Mass and they view what's involved in the agility test. And then two weeks later, they actually take the test. Okay. So we're, we're talking, we may not get through that portion until maybe the end of December. In the meantime, we still got to conduct the background uh, investigation, back up, background check on these candidates, as well as bring them down to the board for an interview, mm -hmm. and you know, figure out who who you, the board wishes to select. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's going to be close. If this academy, I'm being told now, I've, I've I've been trying to push the start date for the academy, but the state has said no. It's still going February 4th. Mm -hmm. um, they'll have roughly 50 because other communities in the state. If academies near their areas are full, mm -hmm. they'll gravitate towards the Western Mass Academy. The city of Quincy is supposed to be hiring 20 police officers. Wow. So they filled the academies east, and they might be sending people out here. Oh. Uh, I've been told there may be a May Academy at STCC, so they'll run two. There'll be a few weeks off, but they'll run two academies mm -hmm. at once. So if we can't get this person into a February Academy, the hope is to get them in May. But we're down. It's a 20-week academy, and it's another three, three to six weeks of in-house training that we do with the person. So, uh, in, in the real world, he gets hired, or this individual gets hired in February. We're not going to see him on the street until late summer. And so and the uh, I'm sorry, no, no. and the officer that's leaving is in the middle of February, thereabouts. Yes, he's okay. he's he's, he's going to leave about uh, February. Now, do we have priority with regards to the um, the camp that's going to be at, at uh, TCC, just in case if the Western, uh, well, excuse me, Eastern Mass fills up the academy? They do, take Do it. they hold? Do we have some sort of? There's no more holding of seats. They'll hold wow. once you submit your application. Interesting. So, uh, and they usually want you a month out. So they're talking February. They want everything January fourth. And I know there's no. In no way we're going to be able to accomplish that. We'll, we'll do our best to try to, but um, so it's really, going to be if the very eastern tight. part of the state fills up theirs and then comes over to ours and fills it up, there's right. nothing we can do about that. Um, no. Okay. Thank you. Um, and is there a deadline for these ten individuals to respond? To yes, it, we extended it because of town hall going to be closed it's Friday, December, uh, December second. So it's Monday, December second. Okay. So we'll know we'll right. know after that how many candidates we have. So. Okay, great. Thank you. 
Uh, next item is a request for traffic control changes. Yes, if I could ask the, the board, uh, Sergeant Bates is, is the author of a lot of these documents that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, he has extensive uh, training over the years. He's been a safety officer for, for a number of years. Um, he's unavailable. He generally works a day shift. I would ask if the board, if possible, if one member may be uh, posted as a liaison, and we could have like a one-on-one -on -one with Sergeant Bates on this because some of the recommendations are, I know there's a school-wide School zone. Or town school yeah. zone town yeah. wide uh, that's probably going to result in some type of traffic study some expenditure of money to have this accomplished um, and for me to bring Richard in tonight he's unavailable he's on his day off um, for him to come in tonight I'd have to compensate him for being here mm -hmm. when he generally works a day shift so I didn't know if it was convenient to have a liaison that could come back and report to the other members of the board okay. Well, to say what the thoughts yeah. and if ideas Deb's not available, I'll do it. I was going to say, I think... Deb, that's her. Are you the liaison? Yeah, I think I'm the liaison oh, to I'm police sorry. and fire. My no, bad. that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'll be happy to get together with Special Bates and then I'll report to the board. On, on, I assume on both traffic control and the school zones. Yes. Okay. All right. Wonderful. And then the uh, next item is a notification from the Registry of Motor Vehicles regarding placard abuse. Right. Um, I if you want to explain what that is. Basically, what they're trying to do is they have a, a program that they instituted down in Waltham. Uh, I guess they have a more of a handicap group that's very active in the city of Waltham. And what they've done is they've hired off-duty police officers, and the fines that they write to cite the people for the handicap violations. There's a few more businesses in Waltham than we have in our community. Uh, pays for the officer, mm -hmm. so whatever they assess for payment will cover the cost of having that officer work a right. four-hour, eight-hour shift. But they, I'm sorry, I think they do two four-hour shifts daily. Um, and some of the tickets can go up to three to five hundred dollars <coughs> for mm -hmm. the violation. What they're also talking about is people using one. If you had a loved one that died that was handicapped, there's some family members that haven't turned that over. Mm -hmm. So the Christmas season come, some will take advantage of it and use it. To my knowledge, we haven't experienced that in this town. We've written our share of fire, fire lane violations. As a matter of fact, in the last few years, we finally changed the penalty involved in those citations mm -hmm. with new tickets. Um, it's interesting. I've shared it with the department. Uh, we have, we'll have this information posted on the bulletin board so that they know what to do because there's a specific uh, code that you have to put on the citation mm -hmm. for the violation. That was the little for the registry to yeah. take to take proper action and. Uh, them involved. The state police have been doing this as well in various areas. Okay. Uh, next is regional dispatch, and I noticed maybe I didn't. This is on both of your dockets. Do we want to save that for last, and then have you come up? We'll we'll finish um, the last item with this chief, and then we'll have both chiefs, and then this chief can leave, and you can stay. All right. Your last item is the consideration of a BYO alcohol for a business. Mm -hmm. I know we discussed this and give me your opinion because I sort of agree with it. <laughs> yeah. it's a, apparently it's a business that is uh, painting with a <clears throat> twist. It's a franchise that's uh, started down in Louisiana. And uh, some of the concerns that I have, what they say is that you go in and you pay for a lesson on painting, uh, either as an individual or a group. And what they say is that you can bring a uh, beverage, uh, probably a bottle of wine. And the literature that was given out was to calm you down, relax, and you paint. Uh, I can't imagine what I'm going to paint if I have a couple of slips of wine or something. I'd be all over the place. Um, but the question I have is, is it just restricted to wine? And s some of the literature had said, no, some people just bring their coffee and drink coffee or they mm -hmm. drink a cola or whatever. But, you know, not that I'm trying to think of the worst situation, but someone comes in with a bottle of Jack and they start doing shots instead. You're there for two to three hours. You can get a pretty good buzz if you're doing it, if mm -hmm. that's your intent. Right. Uh, right. There's probably some people that would go and just sip a glass of wine and, and, and do their paint. But I, I don't know if we need more of a yeah. that type of attractiveness to make your business go. And part of their literature, they said that uh, there are franchises <coughs> that do not drink a BYOB environment, but they're also the 
two least profitable, uh, profitable uh, franchises oh. in, the, in the business. So I guess mm -hmm. wine sells or something. <coughs> so I, I would just mm -hmm. be a little well, leery about opening the door to something like that. Well, we've got this on the agenda with our town um, attorney. Okay. You know, to Woodsy about here later, so we can get his opinion on it. I, I know we had talked about it briefly, and, and I know there was another business in town. It was actually a cooking business, and they allowed the BYOB into that, but that in theory could be used for cooking. So there was at least right. a related use for it, no matter how vague it may seem, you know. But in this case, I can't see any related use. But we'll let, we'll wait and we'll talk to uh, talk to Jim about it, and then we'll get a little better understanding of what we. Uh, <coughs> yes. If I, I'm the uh, franchise owner, mm -hmm. and I'll uh, let you know right now, mm -hmm. beer and wine is all that's allowed through the door. Okay. Okay. okay just be hard right. on the call. put it back into their car. Oh, okay. Thank you. Is that is that through the franchise? Yes. Is that through you or through the? No, that's is that the franchise, franchise requirement. requirement? Right, it's not allowed. This okay. Time. The alcohol is once again it's just something to relax, and most people really don't even drink. Well, but we, we do like to be able to. Uh, Give them that option. Um, okay. Well, let's wait and talk to the town attorney and go from okay. there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, because I'll give some clarification when we talk to our town attorney. So. And that statement will be on my website also. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. Now, why don't you call Paul? How are you, sir? How are you? Hi, sir. How are you? I might be the only person that's kind of You just don't want to sit too. Don't want to sit too. Um, okay, sorry, since sorry. now that you're both here, we both have a common thread tonight, which is regional dispatch, which I know right. is one of Doug's favorite subjects. So <laughs> I'm going to get right into this. I'll let Doug start then. Okay. <laughs> We've been meeting, as has Nick and uh, the fire chief, a regional dispatch with the communities of East Law Meadow, Law Meadow, Hamden, and Wilbraham, and any others that may be interested. Originally, we thought Lolo might join in there. Uh, regionalizing the dispatch functions for police, fire, and EMS is something that the police and fire chiefs are discussing, as well as town, town fathers, Nick and the uh, town manager from Wilbraham, and that was the administrator for Wilbraham, Law Meadow, and administrator from Wilbraham were present as well. Um, but the state has a lot of substantial amount of money to push this. This has been an endeavor that the governor has been after since his first year in as governor mm -hmm. to regionalize, to try to save money. Um, 911, your, your cell phone, 75 cents each month that you pay on your bill goes to state 911. That money can only be used for advancements in mm -hmm. uh, call centers, uh, taking your emergency call. Um, so basically, we have three communities that are approximately the same population, Long Meadow, Wilbraham, and East Long Meadow, Ballpark, and Hamden, I don't know where they came from, but anyways, <laughs> Hamden is in the mix. Um, so the, the thought is, is that we, they have, Wilbraham has so many dispatchers, we have sworn police officers answering the phone, and Long Meadow has civilian dispatchers. Um, right now, the state pays me to train all my police officers to answer the phone to do emergency medical dispatch, to talk someone through CPR compressions if there's a heart call or anything like that. Um, the dispatch profession has grown leaps and bounds. Um, it, it is a true profession mm -hmm. these days. So the concept is, is to, they will provide money to get a building to get, they won't buy the land, but they'll pay for the construction of a dispatch center. Ideally, they would look for a department that might be thinking about building a new police or fire complex and would try to gear some of the room in that new facility mm -hmm. for regional dispatch. Um, they're talking two, two to three dispatchers working an uh, eight-hour shift. Uh, two, uh, two dispatchers and I believe a supervisor. And a supervisor. Depending on the call volume. There's so much, so many things have been changed. I, I'm, I'm on the 911 commission for the state and uh, we meet periodically during a year. And there's been so many changes. This thing is like a moving target. Mm -hmm. My biggest hesitation about doing this, because we've been in studies in the past with UMass, with Amherst, <coughs> um, with La Meadow, Springfield, West Springfield, Chicopee. Mm -hmm. um, and the fear that I have is if, it, if we find out it doesn't work, it sounds great, mm -hmm. 
But if it doesn't work, we still have a vast majority of residents in this town that it's hard sometimes to have them describe what an emergency is. Mm -hmm. They could have fallen down a flight of stairs mm -hmm. and crawled over and called the phone and they would call the seven digit number, not always a 911 call. Um, the policies with this regional dispatch has changed. Originally, they were only answering 911 calls. So if someone called the 56 or 5256, five, 525 prior life prior <laughs> 440 right number <laughs> we'd have to have someone at the station answer the phone otherwise we would never know they called mm -hmm. they might get an answer machine so leave a message we'll call you mm -hmm. tomorrow so that's changed now and it's based on i think there's a fee associated with it somehow but they will answer your <clears throat> emergency calls on 911 but they'll also answer your seven digit line your, your business, business calls okay they'll also do your radio dispatch They'll also pay for equipment that we have, that $1.3 million that we paid for a whole town-wide radio interoperability uh, system. They would have been involved in that. But going forward, if there's problems with equipment that we have, if we're in a regional group, it would involve a consortium of the towns. Mm -hmm. They'd have people involved, and there would be a fee that would be assessed. That you know, They're still gonna cost money to mm -hmm. operate, but they'd be there helping with equipment purchases if a, if a tower failure or you need ready, new radio equipment and things like that. They would uh, they would provide the, the funding for that based on that 75 cents a month cell mm -hmm. phone call. Okay. Um, it sounds good. Uh, there are some communities, and we've got a scheduled date uh, down at Fort Devens. They have the city of Lemonster. They have the town of Harbor and the town of Shirley. And one other small one. Now, Lemonster is like this big, and the rest are like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But supposedly they're paying an even fee for the involvement in it. Um, so we've we've got to schedule a trip to take a ride down there. I don't know if any of the board members um, want to join us on that just to see mm -hmm. to see what it looks like, to see how well, it I operates. Would be in that. Yeah. I'm curious um, what your fellow um, chiefs feel. It's it's relatively new out in that neighborhood. Uh, in our um, in our area, well, it is but where they are for, in yeah. Devons. It's it's fairly new, also. I mean, it's only been up and running, um, and there's actually one town that just got back, just got on board. Um, so, as far as feedback, it's probably out there, but it's still the initial stage, right. and you might get it's really great, yeah, or there's what, still what, some bugs to work folks out. Folks from Longmeadow and Wilbraham saying but they seem excited. I mean, the, mm -hmm. I can seem excited too because I know in five years I'll be retired. Because it might take five years to get okay. this going, but I don't. You know, this <laughs> if, in theory, in theory, it seems like the plan has right. a lot of good to it. Right. Um, like Doug was saying, that the job has changed immensely for both the police department and the dispatcher. Um, the, tr the, the equipment that's going to be required for the town of Esau Metal, if they're by themselves, is also changing in November of next year. Um, they're going to start getting text messages, I guess. Right. Um, so there's a there's a next gen version of 911 coming mm -hmm. out. That's we have the enhanced. The enhanced gave us the ability. If you dropped the phone after you called us, we knew where you were. Right. We knew where. We well, not necessarily where we're needed, but we know you called 911. You know, right. so mm -hmm. little Johnny at the house party. Yeah. Ha ha ha! Uh -huh. Crank the cops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this next gen version that's coming out is going to be more involved. You're going to need time. You're going to need the ability to try to um, get more information on those calls. But the other thing, too, is they're pushing. They're going to start right now. If you dial 911 from your cell phone, mm -hmm. it's going to State Police Northampton. So you're going to be talking to someone at the State Police Dispatch Center. Then they're going to find out from you, okay, well, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. They're going to transfer it down to us in Long Meadow or East Long Meadow or Hamlet mm -hmm. or Wilbraham and take it from there what they're talking about now and we're still trying to get our arms around what the call volume is for cell phones because if we're only averaging maybe four or five 911 calls an hour mm -hmm. a cell phone where you have a dog get hit believe it or not we get more calls for animals hit than we do for a child that gets hit mm -hmm. by a car <clears throat> maybe it's so not, not you know a deer a deer got hit we'll get 10 911 calls about a deer that got hit um, but again, you can you can just shut those down right away. But it's still ringing, and you have to answer it because mm -hmm. if you don't, it will roll over to our backup systems. You know, right now, Law Meadows are backup nine one one center. So, other than Devons, are there any other regional centers in the state? Uh, there's one in Hingham. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Amherst? That Amherst, I don't know if Amherst is up and running yet or not. I know Amherst dispatches now for Pelham. Um, uh, the next, the next step for the four towns that have already met would be, with the the board's permission, would be to apply, there's a grant available um, to assess the needs for equipment mm-hmm. um, and determine, you know, what what that would be. And the the value of the grant this this last one in fourteen was for eight million dollars. The one that's being projected for. Uh, 15, I believe, is $7 million, and it's an open competitive process. So it would behoove us to go in, instead of two communities, two is a region, and that justifies it, to go in with four, or if Ludlow was interested, go in with five. Who writes the grant? Um, it would be the committee. Yeah. It would be the, I think one, one community takes lead on it. Is that how it was described? Right. One community would be the lead and be members from the other communities writing it. It would assist. And, no. I, and I believe there's a submittal that has to go in from each community saying that they're participating in it. There's a, uh, a letter of attestation. attestation Thank yes. you. One of those. It's not a matching grant, is it? No, it's not. No. Okay. But there's still, again, there's still costs to right. the community. Mm -hmm. There would be a um, an assessed fee, but there's also, like I said, the consortium of these officials and you know one of the comments that I made at the meeting we had the other day is that uh, and, and pardon it but it did say finicky sometimes but uh, you have an elected person come in new to the board say hey, I didn't vote for that I want nothing to do with it well, it's too late if this group of three say let's move forward then that's the process that would continue to go because that's you have to have that because monies are now being transferred back to those communities to run this regional they, dispatch. They, they set they set that group up, two different stuff, two different functioning groups. Mm -hmm. One would be based with the, the chiefs, and that would be operational. You know how, how the calls are handled, where they go, who they get directed to. The other one would be the town administrators, town managers, and that would be the management end of the group that would deal with the dispatchers contracts. Um, pay ranges, insurance, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. And that gets paid, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that gets paid right from the fees that we put in, that all the communities put in, mm -hmm. and also the portion that comes from the 911. So essentially, um, through the chair, mm -hmm. we're hiring three people? We the four towns would be hiring three people? That's per shift. Per shift. Per, so per shift, be, so, right. okay. So, so it could be 15 to 18 people with supervisors. Uh, do you have any numbers on how much it would cost for a dispatcher at this point? Because not only, it would be a new position because right now it's being covered by a current police um, staff person who we're paying already right. on the payroll. So would they have less of a shift or would they just be distributed to do something else? We would, I would still be an advocate. I, I want an officer in that station because we still have walk-in traffic. Okay. Some of the other communities, and I think that's what they were talking about, is uh, in this, Neshoba is the name of the one up at Devons, is that they were talking about putting a monitor in a, in a telephone you would pick up, you would talk to the dispatcher. Mm -hmm. It may not be in East Long Meadow, it may be in Wilbraham in our case, it may be in another community. Okay. And they would ask you what the problem is, and they would either dispatch a cruiser, or if there was an officer in a station, they would come forward and talk. Um, that's, again, that's a whole, that's a bump in the way we've been doing business. You come mm -hmm. to the police department, someone's there to, you know. 24-7. Well, like the other question I would have um, is when the grant runs out, then are we assuming the payroll? And so we have a grant to Supp create it. Supposedly, they say that this money will keep on funding those. Supposedly. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tend to believe it as, as much of a financial hardship the Commonwealth went through mm -hmm. um, since this governor came in office. I thought for sure there would have been a way that the legislature or somebody would have gotten their hands on this pot of money, and it hasn't mm -hmm. happened. And the, the way the legislation is written, it's for telecommunication, mm -hmm. for e E911. Well, I'm interested in learning more about it. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and do you, I was just to answer my last question, was do you have a ballpark figure on how much it would cost for a dispatcher? What are they running? Just, and if you don't, it's fine. I, I don't, wondering. but I, I for, for our community, it's the yeah. cost of a police officer. The cost of a police Salary officer. Salary of the officer. 
Uh, w- one of the um, the advantages they, they were talking about the Devon's um, operation is the smaller communities. They're 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 paying slightly more than they would mm-hmm. um, if it was just their own. Mm-hmm. But they're also receiving the benefits from having all the technology and having the, the, their staff trained on a regular, you know, trained to the next level. Okay. Um, it, it provides them a, a better service. Okay. Um, and the larger community gets to spread that out with everybody. So, that, I mean, they're saying there's a benefit for both. I mean, it's something that it's still gonna, the there's, there's years moving forward. It's not like six months from now. Right. There's still some homework but, to be done. Um, okay. we, so you're just letting us know about it then. Right. right. We okay. feel comfortable. In the past, we've got into study groups, and that's been for, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Consultants. That's been a home run because the state has been paying these folks seventy-five to one hundred fifty thousand dollars to do a study on whether it would work. We're beyond that stage. We know what the needs are, so we're kind of saving the state money by saying we don't need that. This is what we have, so we're trying to move to the next step and um, see what see what we can do. Uh, I, I know originally when we met in Long Meadow, the f- April first deadline and get as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. That's been pushed back based on the commission meeting that was at last week. So we're not even going to set what the monies are and what the groundworks are until January when we meet as a commission again. Okay. So well, Mr. Chairman, the, the, yes. the ask for the board, and appreciate uh, both the chiefs, I think they, they summarized this last meeting that the three of us were at very well, and hopefully the board has a picture of what we're looking at. Um, I think the ask here this evening is whether or not you believe that it's worth uh, our time right to pursue this and continue to update the board. Okay. Pursuing it meaning go, continue going to the meetings? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. And a road trip too. And would you, yeah. want, we'll try to schedule a road trip. Uh, yeah, that would be good. Uh, I don't know if next week is too soon. Mm. <coughs> the other locations are Essex, which is at the Sheriff's Department. And I think there's one down at the Cape as well. Okay, that would be a weekend trip. <laughs> but this new one, th- this one here in the Shoba is the is the one they really uh, are very proud of. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we all yeah, want to see yeah. That, yeah. Is that something we have to make a formal declaration of a vote? I think the board could take a vote or just uh, give us this um, permission, if you will, to go after this opportunity. You have our permission. Right. Thank you. Terrific. Based on <laughs> my fellow members' yeah. agreement. Well, he's just saying they're going to continue going right, to the right. meetings. Right. 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 Yep. And I'm, I'm interested in if you're right. planning a trip. Okay. Yeah. You know. We all want to know about the trip. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Okay. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Yes, you too. Good to see you. Go take a little think about my walk. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you. How are you? I'm well. Okay. Okay. Your next item is unfortunately your res- a call firefighter resignation. Yes. Um, Pat Farrell's been a member of the department for several years. He uh, he took a job in Wilbraham several years ago, and when he first took it, his his plan was to stay on East Slum Meadow as a call firefighter, stay on Hamden as a volunteer firefighter, and stay on Wilbraham <coughs> as a full time firefighter. <coughs> His, his initial um, plan when he got hired in Wilbraham, he, he went to paramedic school. That was one of his requirements for getting hired in Wilbraham. Um, big commitment, a lot of time. Um, he did take a leave of absence at the time through uh, Chief Brady. And um, he has now decided um, three fire departments, a life, a fiance, a, a house, the whole nine yards. It's, 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 it's not realistic. Um, and he, he has decided to... Um, you know, resigned from the Islam Metal Fire Department. He, he was a real good guy for the department uh, when he was available. Uh, but again, he's been on a leave of absence for several years. So, okay. Yep. Shall we make a, do I make a motion to accept the resignation? Uh, is there a motion to regretfully uh, accept the resignation of call firefighter Patrick Farrell? Smooth. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Mm-hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item is surplus fire equipment. Yep. Can you start with the um, scuba bottle compressor? The, the, the compressor, yep. Uh, the compressor, we uh, we submitted, uh, we sent it out for a request for um, bids, sealed bids to, to purchase it. Um, we received one for $10. Uh, myself and Nick, um, you know, went through the opening process, and both of us recommend that um, the board doesn't accept it. I did some homework. I uh, checked with local scrapyards. 
Um, one of them has offered us um, $180. They'll actually come and pick it up. Um, so, with the board's permission. Okay. Is, there a, is there a motion to allow the fire chief to scrap the the bottle compressor at the scrap yard and get the $180? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Fine. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, on, on a side note with that, the new compressor is in. Um, oh. It's in, operating. Um, guys love it. With no more trips back and forth to Long Meadow. Eric Madison, Fire Chief Madison, loves it. Um, uh, and uh, we just received the 47000 um, from the federal government that helped pay for that. Okay. Excellent. So it, it, cost the, it cost the town about $2,900, I guess, for uh, for $50,000 $50, piece of Great. equipment. It's really, uh, it was really nice, yeah. yeah. Okay, next item is the uh, 81 Pierce Arrow Fire Pumper. Yep. We had some interesting bids here. Yes, guys, we did. Um, the highest bid was a, um, a local gentleman out of Agawam uh, for $2,800. Um, I, I guess with the board's permission. What did those go for? Um, twenty-eight hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, everybody has different purposes to to, to get them. Um, this gentleman, he he's a collector. Um, he'll probably uh, put it in his barn. He's got a barn that has eight or nine other fire trucks in it. Really? Yeah. Um, he he's a collector. He'll he'll take it and he'll tinker with it for a few years. He might bring it to a parade here and there, but he, he, it's 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 a funny business. There's the one gentleman that was from Florida was actually going to. He wanted to drive it back to Florida. Okay. <laughs> Which, after so you know, putting some money into it, it was yeah. and that was, was the most wondering. interesting bid because it was well, like he took his piggy bank. Yeah, one thousand eight hundred forty-six dollars <laughs> and fifty-one cents. That was fascinating. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking of with the scrap. <laughs> since, you cents, had looked since you had looked at the scrap metal yeah. for the other one, I was yeah. just wondering what would the scrap metal be? yeah value right. be. Yeah. Did you happen to look at that? I did not. You I did, did not. not. Okay, um, so you're going by the judge judging by the weight, mm -hmm. um, it's it's probably not twenty eight hundred dollars. The price of the price of steel is, is is extremely low right now. Okay. So just wanted to make sure we get the most big right. for our buck. Um, mm -hmm. and Mr. Pond does I'm sorry, the gentleman who made the uh, bid doesn't have parts in his garage that could fix this. I'm just not this truck, no. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> He right. does have a lot, but not sure right. we'll have a reference, though, right? Yeah. Right. right. Um, is there a motion to approve the acceptance of this uh, this high bid for the 1981 Pierce Arrow? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I could, uh, I'd like to add just an ancillary issue to this um, bid process and bring it up as a uh, sort of a seed for thought for an annual town meeting warrant. Um, the chief and I went through this process because uh, not necessarily because the uh, Massachusetts uh, procurement laws applied, 30B. We were well below the threshold, um, even with the value that Chief had informed the board about. Um, although it's, you know, definitely best to try and inject competition into any kind of a bidding situation. However, we did this really because there's a town bylaw in the books that states that if there's a disposition of surplus um, items, with a value of over $300, then the town must uh, go through a bid process that includes advertising and sort of and sort of prolonging the process. Um, I intend to at least present to the board an idea of modifying that uh, uh, part of the general bylaw to come up to date with what the procurement laws uh, would recommend. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And your next item is the uh, Emergency Management Director recommendations. And I know you've been working with um, Slug and Bronski on this? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll let her. Take that. So, um, again, I think that East Long Meadow is blessed with people who want to volunteer um, and work with us to make things move smoothly. And uh, we did have um, two excellent candidates who submitted, um, both of them coming with great recommendations, both of them with great credentials. Um, and the Chief and I interviewed both of them. And after meeting with both of them, we uh, agreed that our recommendation would be uh, Anthony Gentile for the position. Um, my feeling was, and it's just as the chief was saying, um, Anthony is currently a dispatcher. 
He has tremendous experience in taking emergency calls and dealing with emergencies and and just being, you know, on on all the time. Right. Um, that impressed me as well as, you know, his leadership capabilities. You know, he's going to have to work with um, all of the other department heads in case of an emergency. He's already uh, signed up for classes and shown great enthusiasm. We also know he was one of our candidates, um, the top five. Yep. So he takes great interest in, mm -hmm. in the town of East Longmeadow. And so both the chief and I would be recommending that we offer this position to Anthony Gentile, Jr. Okay. Discussion? Yes. Um, when did the interviews take place? Because I, I do remember Monday. saying I wanted to take part in that. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to bring up, and, and no, no disrespect met, but the other candidate has been so involved um, doing things that don't cost, that have involved his time, and he's not looked for much from East Longmeadow, and I just can't, I guess I, I would respectfully disagree with the recommendation and I don't know where we would go from here because um, I mean he's he's well I mean we sort of um, <coughs> he's done he's done I, some I, of the same things yeah. that um, Deb has, um, has, has said that he, you know the other candidate yeah. has done and they're both fine candidates mm -hmm. and it's not to take w nothing anything away from the other right it's just that um, the other candidate has committed himself um, very visibly, and um, he has committed his time um, for positions that we've we've not really reimbursed him cash wise, and he knows the field, and he has been with uh, the department also um, for many years. I I don't how long has that other candidate been respectfully? Yes, yeah. since 1996. Okay. So respectfully, yes, Thorpe, um, putting in time is certainly one aspect that you look at when you're looking to put someone in a position. Absolutely. But there are many attributes that need to be considered when you're asking a volunteer to work with other leaders within our community. Um, and I feel that I did due diligence in mm -hmm. speaking with our department heads about working in a situation like that mm -hmm. and um, stand by my recommendation. And I know we charged the two of you to um, to go through this process and obviously um, I mean it's a tough call because I agree on both sides. I, I you know know the candidates and um, but I don't want to discount the work you've done so I think if nothing else at the least very least we could do is bring it to a vote and then if that doesn't work out then mm -hmm. you know so um, is there a motion to accept Anthony Gentile as the emergency management director I believe is what it is right emergency yes. management? yeah so moved. is there a second I'll second on necessity all in favor aye aye Very good. thank you call for opposed or abstain uh, uh, against Abstain? Abstain. Okay. All right. And I think that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy <coughs> Thanksgiving. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one additional issue with this appointment. It's the length of the term with the board concerned. Um, it's one year. Oh, okay. One year. Would, um, would that be okay. one year or would you fall under the June? Do you want to go for a year or do you want to? Typically, start through the, board, the through year the, in June. St start the year in, in July, July 1st. first. It's yes. generally how it has yeah. been. Okay. Yeah. Well, when are they starting the position? Well, he's going to take over immediately. We have an acting. We have an acting director as we speak, so we have really no director. So then, what happens July first? We do this again, or we the vote to no. renew, or we do it again? I, I, I would like to recommend that we fill the position and look again in. For July, reevaluate and reestablish um, July 2015. It would start July 2014. Now to July 2014, and then July 2014 to 15. Is that? 
through the, through the chairman, what I'm asking, right, what I'm asking for the board to do is to establish the length of this term. Traditionally, it has been on a July 1 through June 30th mm -hmm. basis for the appointment um, and uh, has been variously treated as either a renewal, really treated as a renewal process. However, if the board is looking to do an evaluation and uh, perhaps start a process in advance of that July 1st, what I would do is put this back on a board agenda perhaps as early as March or April okay. to start thinking uh, about that. If the board is interested in doing a more of a renewal process, either at that time, um, then that would allow for, you know, uh, give me direction as to what to do because typically what uh, should occur is for renewals of boards and commissions, you want to start taking a look at those late May, mid-June and try ideally, it doesn't always work out that way, but ideally to have things in place um, by the last meeting in June, so, so July 1. Okay. So this will be July 1 until July, excuse me, this will be up again for July 1st of 2014? That is a decision of the board. Well, we can put it up for renewal. Yeah. July first, two thousand fourteen. Yep. If there's a if there's, yeah. if there's an issue, we can deal with it then. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to make this um, position effective immediately and to run through June thirtieth, two thousand fourteen, to be renewable with the next fiscal year. So, so moved. moved. Everybody like that one. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Arlene. Next is Arlene Miller. Normally, I'll see you once a year. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, how are you? Uh, nice to meet you. I would consider it fun. <laughs> nice to meet you. How are you tonight? Good. Yeah. Uh, and you are here on behalf of the uh, the trash contracts and the tip fees and all that good trash okay. talk. I'll let that go. <laughs> talk <laughs> trash. I hate it when people come here and talk trash. Yeah. <laughs> I think Nick has brought, kept you in the, uh, up to date pretty much with what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. We started, um, <coughs> well, let's back up. 20 plus years ago, a group of communities in the Southern Pioneer Valley signed a long term disposal contract with the waste energy facility in Agawam called Covanta. Today it's called Covanta on Route 5. Um, that contract will be over July 1st, 2014. And in anticipation of that, a group of communities, 15 communities in the region, many of who have current contracts with Cavanta, some who, some who do not have current contracts with Cavanta, but are also looking because of other reasons for disposal capacity by uh, this spring or in 2014, joined us. Um, so we, by pooling our trash, mm -hmm. um, came up with about 40,000 tons annually that we were uh, able to discuss. We uh, agreed as a group that it was, uh, we met with Covanta and had a conversation about should we just negotiate with them or not, because under the state laws we do not need to go mm -hmm. out to bid for this. Uh, Covanta, of course, suggested we just negotiate. The communities, uh, con by consensus, agreed they wanted to go out with an RF RFQ, request for quotes. So we did that over a process during the summer and uh, sent a, created uh, an RFQ <coughs> together and distributed that to 15 or 20 possible folks and we got some very very favorable numbers back from the four different entities the group decided to uh, interview them then the, f uh, the four different three of the four entities to see because they were very similar quotes um, we were looking but for either a three five ten or fifteen or twenty year contract mm -hmm. we just looked to get more as much information as possible. At the end of the day, the, the group did not want to do another 20-year contract. It wasn't necessary. So we interviewed the uh, three vendors and said, you know, we all, they're all good quotes. Maybe you could all sharpen your pencil. They all sharpened their pencils and came back. And uh, at the end of the, the day, we, Covanta was very close to the others. The others were further away for us, our towns, mm -hmm. in order to, to transport the trash. So the group decided to give Covanta one more chance to beat the other two and they did they sharpened their pencils again came down so which is a very favorable uh, very very favorable mm -hmm. quote with th that uh, that we've got an offer from Covanta it's for a three-year contract uh, things are changing in the industry very rapidly and so the group felt it was not in our any of our best interest to get into a long-term contract could have saved a little money if we went to a five-year with Covanta but nobody felt that was advantageous mm -hmm. So the, what we're looking at um, is, a, is a term agreement 
which simply says to the communities, the 15 that were there and any other that care to join us, uh, are you interested in talking further with us at this point or are you out? Mm -hmm. Are you interested then in taking it to the next step of the contract? So this, what was before you tonight, is called the term sheet and it's simply, I've got a signature sheet with me if you choose to do this. Um, some other towns have already signed it that aren't on this sheet but are on another sheet. So we have, of the 15, we probably have um, 11 currently signed. Uh, some others are just making a decision mm -hmm. which way they're going to go. Um, there are some issues I, I, and that Nick and I have talked about in the term sheet that need clarification as far if, if they go, because they will go forward in the contract. I've advised and, and I believe that those issues will be clarified to the benefit of the community or we won't sign it mm -hmm. in a contract going forward. So what we're asking for tonight is based on the basic stuff, which is the, the term, which is three years, plus a th option for three-year, mm -hmm. mutually acceptable option for three-year uh, extension, um, and the, the tip fees of 61, 62, yeah. 63, which is, you know, mm -hmm. we're paying over $80 yeah, a ton right that's now. that's what I was going to say. We, um, this is one of those good, bad news, good news things, because I know going retroactively to July 1st, yes. our tip fee has gone up from $80.62 by a dollar. It was a dollar forty-two. Mm -hmm. Yes. But by signing this contract starting in July 1st of two this year, this coming year, um, it drops from $82.04 to $61. Correct. So, so from what Nick, and from what you folks generated, we do about 3,400 tons a year, and that works out to about, not that I'm, not that I'm anal retentive with my figures, but that turns out to be $71,536 that we'd save. So, each year, so, each uh, of the three years. Yeah, so. basically, yeah. I mean, it's a small increase yeah. each, but that's. Uh, Trash is very, it's very competitive mm -hmm. right now. We were, we were surprised as a, as a, as a group mm -hmm. that uh, we had the very, three very responsible uh, quotes mm -hmm. and we could have gone frankly either way and, and been and been served I believe very well for the, for the term we were talking about um, so in three years I expect there'll be more competition and we right. don't know that the, the technologies are changing right, right. and trash is going down people are starting to recycle and compost food waste and so these people the companies are trying to be very creative mm -hmm. and, and, and competitive so uh, I think we were lucky right time right place good it okay. is so if you're so you know again you, you should bring up the point about the board of public works yeah they don't agree with some of the language and and, on, and i think it's because it's not clear and that's the right of first refusal right i want that removed i think if they understood more about it which we will get clarification on and that it does not pro does not compete with the idea does not eliminate <coughs> the idea of procurement mm -hmm. Then I think they would be okay, but we're not. I don't have that. I'm not. Can't speak for Covanta, yeah. but yeah. that's that has to be defined yeah, to enough. the satisfaction of the communities, or nobody's going to sign Perfect. that paragraph. So okay, so Perfect. we can we can proceed, and, you're, and that will be an item of discussion before we actually sign a contract. Right. The next step. Um, I've already. The communities asked the 15 communities uh, that were attending asked me to ask Covanta to get us the language of the contract as soon as we could, mm -hmm. even before the deadline for this term sheet uh, is due. Okay. And they sent a draft to me the end of last week, to myself and the town manager in Longmeadow. Um, and s they, the group also uh, said that, that the Longmeadow Town Council should be the reviewer of this document. My thought, and I've spoken to Nick, but I'm, I'm going to <coughs> send out an email to, the some, to some of the members of 15 towns, I think at this point the next step ought to be a meeting with Covanta mm -hmm. to define those exact there are two questions that have to be answered by them before anybody can consider the legality you know the, the why warehouses mm -hmm. and those are whatever words the lawyers have to mm -hmm. nit nitpick in the con contract that has to be uh, clarified first so to my mind the next step and I've already written to C Covanta said we would like I, I would like to suggest we do this they offered to meet and that's fine I said this has to be clarified that paragraph might just have to go um, I think they're very excited to have our trash. Yes. I don't think it'll be so. I, I've asked them to maybe next week or the week after to set up a time, have a set up a time where we can invite. I'd like your town council, if possible, to be mm -hmm. there, okay. and, and Nick uh, and our, our town council, and whatever you know, five or six of the communities, just so we can wrestle with those the two issues that I think are important 
that, okay. that I think we all are concerned about. Perfect. Other Great. than that, I think Great. it's fine. Seventy-one thousand dollars. Yep. Yep. So if you um, want to vote and sign. Yes. <laughs> um, and what exactly we're signing to say? That, that it just says that you agree to the basic conditions of the term agreement. This is not a contract. It's not a not binding anything. Okay. It's like a it's like a right of it's like a uh, letter of intent. Okay. We intend, we intend to go forward, mm -hmm. with the conversation of the contract. Okay. With the okay. Conversation. Because there are some communities. Yep. To be honest, there, there's some of them that are just sort of joining the the group to mm -hmm. find out the numbers so they could go negotiate with somebody else. Okay. So at this point, we don't. It's not in our interest as a group to keep feeding them stuff. We just want to call our group down to what's mm -hmm. going to be really the group is interest serious mm -hmm. about this good contract. Okay. And if they're not serious, we you know goodbye. That's okay. so it's understood Great. that that paragraph needs to be removed, though. It's understood it's that the paragraph needs to be clarified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y yes. To the satisfaction of the we, people. You don't have to sign right. anything. This okay. is not. This is not a. This is not a document that says I'm. Right. This is an okay. agreement to go forward. That's all that I'm comfortable with. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to allow, I guess, myself on behalf of the board to sign the uh, agreement to go forward with the potential contract with Covanta for our tip fees? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. just advise the board that um, from Covanta's perspective, they uh, would ideally like to have a, a compressed timeline, meaning mm -hmm. something. Uh, signed before the end of the year. We think that there may be a little bit of room there, but maybe not much because they budget on a calendar year, I believe. So they're trying to make their plans. Corporate, which the corporate right. issues are urgent. Or, yeah, I don't think it's, you know, hard and fast. Uh, I think they just don't want this to be a prolonged, uh, you know, one of the... One they'll of the be willing to negotiate on those items. So that's what they want to well, get done. And so. they also, I should say, um, and maybe Nick has already told you this, or we're, we're interested this regional idea we think is creating strength for mm -hmm. us. It's definitely created bargaining strength. Mm -hmm. It's made us desirable for, for these different companies. Uh, we're looking at a, a s one contract. Each person, each each community would sign it separately, right. but it's not like it's going to be six or ten different versions of this contract. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're and, and uh, that's advantageous to Covanta. It saves them a lot of time, a lot right. of legal stuff, mm -hmm. and you know wordsmithing 15 different contracts right. so that's our goal and that's another reason for them to be to work with us as far as getting any any questions ironed out before we do this so. right I think they're they, they with it in the in the in the case of a waste energy facility which they are they have to feed that with trash it's not like a, a landfill where you can fill it or not fill it you can slow it down or not this has to run it needs because they, they have commitments for the energy that comes out the back mm -hmm. okay. so they need our trash okay. and we're and we're pre we're presenting you know maybe 25,000 or you know we had up to 40 in the group and I think at the end of the day we'll probably be around 30,000 okay. that will actually go forward with them great so. thank you very thank much thank you very much thank, thank you for your hard work oh, thank you Same with you, Nick. happy thanksgiving oh thank you too happy yes thank you Nick. thanks good to see you Paul. happy thanksgiving. thanksgiving happy thanksgiving thank you sir always, always a pleasure Okay, next, oh, we're running a bit behind. Uh, okay. ne next, we have the uh, Board of Assessors and our Town Accountant, Tom Caliento. And whoever wants to represent, just, if there's more than two of you, you can bring a chair. Yeah. Come on up and bring you? your own chair. How's your foot? <laughs> Better. Good. Thank you. Nice to see you. Hello. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice this see is you. an interesting. Yeah. Hello, sir. Oh. Nice to see you. Um, okay. okay. We are all here due to. Well, why don't you explain it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> due um, to. You explain it. <laughs> we are here to just have our um, LA5, which is a form that we need to have signed and submitted to the Department of Revenue in order to have our tax rate approved. Mm -hmm. um, when we were here on October 1st, the Board of Selectmen voted to have one tax rate for all, and they did sign off on this form. And it has been kicked back by DOR uh, with the knowledge that the excess levy capacity number has changed and they want the Board of Selectmen to re-sign so they're aware of the a dollar amount of the excess levy capacity. And that dollar amount is $1,937.29 as excess levy. And uh, this, the signing the first one and signing this one doesn't affect 
the tax rate because we had gone with a factor of one all along, right? Right. And okay. this is just, uh, again, to have the tax rate approved. The factor of one has not changed. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have to be re-voted. That was uh, a vote of the Board of Selectmen. Okay. So in order to move forward with our tax rate, we do need updated like signatures. With today's date? Today's date. Same order we did. Thank you. And other than that, we're all set, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Very simple thing. Like that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you thank for you all your all. hard work. Yes, thank you all. I appreciate have it. Have a good evening and have a good Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you as well. <laughs>
to vote this in, mm -hmm. we could have a contingency upon um, input or, um, or do, try out for a year and see what Corinne has to say about it. Sure. You know, because if it begins to be labor intensive, um, it may not be, you know, as advantageous for. Sure. For sure. Yeah, that's fine. You, you know what I mean? Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Bill, how it would usually go is usually the, the first one is the one that really is where you're going to have the majority mm -hmm. of the employees because obviously we're offering this to every employee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and every employee is going to have the opportunity this one time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to sign their name and get the insurance. Mm -hmm. right? um, and how it works in all future enrollments, mm -hmm. only the new employees who are hired would have 30 days to enroll. Um, so okay. um, usually it's that this very first enrollment that is labor intensive. Is, is the one because you're getting the people switching over who want to switch over. Well, and I, actually, a lot of times what we find is that a lot of people, if they have like a, a Colonial or whoever Boston Mutual, mm -hmm. a lot of times they just they're looking for extra insurance because people just don't have enough insurance. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. And so if someone can add a hundred thousand dollars for a reasonable price and right. get all the other bells and whistles, then it's usually a pretty good opportunity to the employee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's voluntary. And we want we want what's best for our employees. Oh yes, we, no, absolutely. Yeah. We don't want to deprive yeah. them of that either. So. Okay. I'm trying to think of how to word this. I mean, should we ask you? <laughs> well, uh, let me ask you something. If we give you permission to do this, and and we find out it's too labor intensive, is it something that we? Could, there, I mean, there's not really a contract. We're just giving you. Oh yeah, no. So we I could we could in theory pull a plug in it. That's yeah. all. Yeah, I think. Name off the list. I'm sorry. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, no, no. I think I, I think obviously you no. Know, before you vote, I think, <coughs> um, <Excuse me. laughs> because obviously if. The board does approve it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the next step would be for our MetLife group to contact Corinne because yeah. obviously we would need a census. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, there is a little work involved, yeah. um, and then the prices are based, and the price sheet we gave you is pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, but it does vary sometimes, mm -hmm. like a penny per based on the population yeah. okay. and the age. But again, we are very competitive. Okay. Okay. Great. And so, so yeah, so this is like a. Um, um, Tenant of the will, in other words, you're going along, and if we just if we determine, so I guess I guess I'm trying to do that in lieu of mm -hmm. trying to put a time frame on it. Mm -hmm. So, so um, as long as we know that, then I really have no problem uh, making a motion to um, allow MetLife to to work with our town to uh, become an insurance one of their insurance options. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Painless. I sure appreciate it. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good holiday. You Thank too. Thank you. Sorry, I thought I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are. Hey, we're almost back on time, but I know our uh, seven o'clock appointment. I saw one of the people out in the hallway. I want to check. In the meantime, I'm trying to zip through meetings, invitations, and reminders. Uh, town offices will be closed Thursday, November 28th, <coughs> and Friday, November 29th, in observance of Thanksgiving. The capital planning meeting is Monday, December 2nd, 2013, 6 p.m. in the town hall hearing room. Appropriations Committee annual budget meeting with department heads is Thursday, December 5th, 2013 at 630 in the Council on Aging Media Room. Uh, Hampshire County Select Board Association meeting is Thursday, December 5th, 2013, 5 p.m. at the Blue Bonnet Diner, 342 King Street, North Hampton, RSVP by December 2nd. Board of Selectmen's meeting Tuesday, is Tuesday, December 10th, although Nick, I think you were talking about possibly moving that. Uh, yes. And, uh, because of the very next meeting on the list. Okay. Uh, next my item is surrounding impacted communities meeting with GPI regarding a traffic study Tuesday, December 10th, 6.30 p.m. at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, let me go through these and we'll talk about that. Uh, Veteran Service District meeting Tuesday, December 17th at 7 p.m. in the Munson Town offices. It's in the Selectman's meeting room, 29 Thompson Street, Munson. The Board of Selectman's meeting is Wednesday, December 18th, 6 p.m. in the Town Hall hearing room. Next Board of Selectmen's meeting is Tuesday, January 7th, 2014 at 6 p.m. in the Town Hall Hearing Room. Uh, the MMA 2014 Annual Meeting and Trade Show is Friday, January 24th and Saturday, January 25th, 2014 at the Heinz Convention Center in Sheraton Boston Hotel in Boston. And the Appropriations Committee meeting request with the Board of Selectmen is either Feb February 13th or 20th. And once we tie that down, we'll get a more firm date and everyone can make it or the majority of us can make it and the majority of them can make it. So Mr. Chairman, a yes. few comments. Yes. We're going working backwards, if I could, then. <coughs> that last one, uh, appropriations, is actually looking for a decision. Um, From us? Yes. Uh, I was asked again uh, today um, just to verify whether or not it, you know the board would be able to consider it. And I know that's a ways out. And so those I are both Thursdays, I believe, right? They're both Thursdays. Um, I, either one's fine with me, as far as I can I'm tell. I'm unavailable for I'm both days. 
well, there's a problem. But do they have to meet with the whole board, or can they meet with the majority of the board? Um, that's a decision of the board. <coughs> Are you giving you know, one's fine? Okay. So if we, why don't you get back to them and tell them? Why don't we you want to just select the thirteenth? Sure. It's a lucky number. Well, that's um, the day before Valentine's Day. Are you sure? All right, the twentieth. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm just trying to make it easy on you. There's always one romantic in the group. Yeah. Well. So, uh, but um, so why don't you tell them it's on the twentieth, and there's a, there's going to be sixty-seven percent of the board there. So <laughs> if that's fine with them, then uh, then you know we'll, we'll proceed with that day. I mean, I can you know I can always yes. pull an Angela and Skype in. Well, there's you know, no problem there's with no that. No problem with that. I, 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 I don't know if I own that, that whole that whole thing, but a, I, I will. She'll pay you. She'll pay you a fee. For I'll show that. you how to do it. Um, now our our selectors meeting on the tenth. Uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, are we still working backwards? I, I will, okay. but I'll follow your lead, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> but I was uh, my question was going to be um, if the board members can start thinking about whether or not you want to attend the annual meeting. Oh. Show. Oh, I we how can we? We got a meeting on that day, don't we? No, no, this is the uh, January 24th and 25th. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, I'll no. be going. Okay. That's uh, Friday, Saturday. Yes. Sure. Did mm -hmm. the board members, uh, okay, so generally what will happen is the board members will uh, will send the registration in for the shows, and um, the board has also attended the Friday night dinner. I, I'm assuming that the board members would want to do that. And then sure. the board, I believe, has also made its own uh, reservations with the hotel. Right. Right. Okay. And there are uh, deadlines associated with that as far as getting the rate for the uh, convention. Okay. If you could get us those or if they're in our box, we'll take a look at them. But uh, we'll go ahead and register you mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. for that. And then you should get things via <coughs> email you can as make far as. For the hotel <laughs> Um, okay. Nice? Then you'll get emails and you'll be able to sign up for whatever workshops uh, okay. are of interest to you. Thank All you. right, thank you. Have we gotten back to the tenth yet? <laughs> by, by all means. Okay. Um, I know, obviously, because of the uh, the impact of communities meeting, that's on the same night as our meeting, and, and I'm sure at least one of the board members plus you would want to go to that, if not more. So. Would you suggest, do you have a preference of, or does the board have a preference of either the 9th or the 11th? Mm. It would be a Monday or a Wednesday. Yes, yeah, so just to explain too, that meeting on the 10th is going to be a large, uh, a meeting of all of the communities that are part of that traffic review, peer review that uh, GPI is doing. So it is a rather important meeting. Um, that's why this is coming up for consideration. So you can decide. I'll be coming in from outside of the area on both of those days, but I should be here by six. Okay. I have no. I would prefer Wednesday. That's fine. So the eleventh. At six o'clock. Yep. The order selectmen. How's that, Nick? Will Will we be in the um, here, or will we be in the uh, media center? I mean, I'm not certain. Okay, it'll be TBA. All right. And while we're um, before, I hate to keep you away for while. Um, the Thursday, December fifth. There's also a uh, the the appropriations meeting with the department heads is that night, and that's also the Hamden County Select Boards Association meeting. So I don't know if, if anyone up here has a preference as to where they'd where they'd rather go. Um, if we can get if someone can go to the select boards meeting, I'll be happy to attend the appropriations meeting or vice versa. So um, tell me what date we're looking at here. I'm still fifth. working on December fifth. Okay. I could add a note to that meeting on the uh, for the Hampshire County mm -hmm. meeting. The focus on that is going to be uh, Council on Aging related. They have a speaker coming in who uh, your director is very familiar with um, through her associations at the state level. Mm -hmm. She recognizes that she needs to go to the budget meeting. Right. Um, so uh, unfortunately, she would not be able to accompany the board member that. I'd attends. like to go to the budget meeting with appropriations. Okay. If I have a choice. Hmm. That's what we're going to do. All right. Okay. All right. Then I guess nobody's going to the board meeting. You know, the so the, uh, there'll be a quorum of the board at the appropriations. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Post that. Yeah. Do you do you feel that we should have one of us going to the other one? Uh, it, not necessarily. I, I, who's our liaison to senior? Today? I am. Oh, okay. go. Well, I mean, it's not a. It's, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to do anything. This is America. So. 
All right. Are we all set with all those matters? I think so. All right. Um, our next our 7 o'clock appointment is Michael Albano. Would you like to come up? And I believe you always have the best decorated legal officer on oh, the holidays. Thank you. <laughs> sure, thank you. It makes it all worthwhile. They and they don't get stolen. Me <laughs> thank you. All right. Obviously, you have. Um, we engage. We engage your firm to do a uh, impact study on the casinos, and and I read it over today, and it's just. I'm glad you did it because there's a lot of stuff in there that I would have never thought of. So, um, so if you'd like to take it from there and just sort of give us, you know, either you know, give an overview or however you want to proceed. You know. well, well, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, mm -hmm. and to the uh, select board, thank you for first engaging us in this um, in this report. Uh, this is exciting for us. Um, Attorney Phillips is with me today as well. It's exciting because it's cutting edge, it's new, mm -hmm. and no matter what casino <laughs> opens up across the country, <coughs> it's a new development and has different impacts on surrounding communities. So we're delighted to be part of this process and working with the town of East Long Meadow. I want to commend your department heads. They are, I've been in this business about 40 years, they're as good as they come. They are very talented, they're experienced, they were very responsive, and we were able to put this report together in good fashion to give you some level of, int of um, understanding of where I think the town should go. Uh, the way we have prepared this report, however, is point specific mm -hmm. relative to where you might want to go with negotiations. So as I submitted the report to Mr. Bro today, I um, included a letter which outlines it as a draft in case you want to go into executive session because as Mr. Chairman, as you've read it, it is point specific relative mm -hmm. to potential negotiations. But having said that, and for the interest of the public, I'd be happy to outline in, in some detail mm -hmm. um, what the impacts could be. Sure. That's um, a good idea. The report is given to you so that it's readable. Mm -hmm. and I've been involved in a million of these, and some of them you can't read and you can't understand. Mm -hmm. I've tried to make it uh, as readable and as it understandable was. as possible. So we started off with the uh, Massachusetts general law, the mitigation impacts. And the key term here is that surrounding communities have to be reasonable in their approach in asking for mitigation funding. And the term reasonable is defined. And you have to show um, quantitatively mm -hmm. uh, how much the impact is going to be. Not an easy task. You have to have some base of an outline of how you wish to recover the mitigation fees. And you have to also be reasonable going forward with the negotiations with MGM and perhaps eventually with the Gaming Commission through an arbitration process. Having said that, I've uh, talked briefly to your town council. He's one of the best. Uh, he's very, very talented at what he does. Mm -hmm. He's experienced. He's shrewd. And he'll do a good job for the town of East Long Island. Um, having said that, he just, he just came in to hear all that praise. Oh my God, I walked through the door before you said that. I would have never got through. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm glad he's here. Um, and so, uh, as moving forward, uh, this is very fluid. Uh, uh, select woman uh, Thorpe uh, was at a meeting with us just the other day, uh, relative with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, there's a lot of numbers being thrown around. There are no definite figures. And so we have to do somewhat of uh, guesstimating and estimating on how to proceed. Clearly, there's going to be an impact on public safety. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Clearly, there's going to be an impact on traffic. Um, and so, in talking with Chief Mellis, uh, we've outlined to you, or I think you're going to need going forward, point specific relative to uh, public safety uh, interests of the community. The traffic uh, figures are still very, very fluid, but we, ha we have offered a projection in here. Mm -hmm. And we've tied it to a formula where you can access, I think, a reasonable amount of funding, which will also leverage that funding down the road if you wanted to do work um, immediately. For example, if you were to receive a 20-year um, sum, an annual basis from MGM, you could, in effect, issue a bond up front, use that payment, mm -hmm. do the work necessary that the town would need mm -hmm. to accommodate the increased traffic. Therefore, you're leveraging the money short-term and long-term to make the necessary improvements to make the roadways safe. Mm -hmm. 
um, relative to the rotary. Uh, it's been studied many times in the town from, from our review. Uh, clearly it's an issue. Any increase in traffic, which you're going to get from 83, is going to cause a problem there. Um, our recommendation is that MGM should be responsible for the study at a minimum, and then any side effects from there, uh, they should be held responsible. Under no circumstances do we recommend that the taxpayers of East Long Meadow be held liable for any increased traffic based on the um, casino development project in Springfield. There are some issues uh, relative to recreation, and I've outlined some at Franconia Golf Course. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize that although it's owned by the City of Springfield, East Long Meadow was very nice to donate property many years ago, going back to 1940. Mm -hmm. And part of that contingency in that agreement is that the residents of East Long Meadow uh, would have lower uh, fees relative to utilizing the golf course, open space, and parkland. It was never intended to be a commercial venture. But published reports indicate that M MGM wants to use both uh, Franconia and Veterans Golf Courses to lure players as part of the development project. And I think that's um, it's going to, to deny access to East Long Meadow residents and that uh, the, uh, MGM should compensate the town uh, in, in some amount. Uh, based on every study we've read, there's going to be gaming problems in terms of problem gamblers and substance abuse issues. We have outlined a proposal for you that would allow the town to go out for RFQ to hire necessary counselors to address these issues as opposed to what the national norm is, is to have 800 numbers where people could call if they feel they have a problem. Mm -hmm. We think the town residents of East Long Meadow should be treated in a much better fashion than that. Um, again, based on studies, it, it appears there will be a decline in property values. Working with your assessors, uh, we have outlined a zone for potential impact of declining property values. Our recommendation would be that you put in effect a stabilization fund. So if the property values go down and the revenues go down in terms of the tax base, mm -hmm. that you can access an escrow account immediately to take that money and put it back into use in, in the town coffers. We believe there's going to be a lottery impact as well. And we have proposed, based on the estimates that um, the town treasurer has given us of your annual allotment from the state lottery. Anticipation of a 6.1% decline. Again, an escrow account would be placed um, uh, and funded by MGM to make sure that there is no loss of revenue to the town should the lottery money uh, decline, which we anticipate that it will. Um, clearly, the paratransit and the PBTA uh, systems will be affected. And we have uh, recommendations relative to that. Mm -hmm. In the area of economic development, we have uh, spoken with area businesses. We have done our research and reviewed various studies. Uh, we believe that there is going to be a decline in business, uh, perhaps uh, especially rather in the restaurant business. And um, we are suggesting that the MGM fund a uh, economic development specialist, a business improvement and retention specialist, uh, part-time position, that would be at the disposal of the uh, people of uh, East Long Meadow mm -hmm. to make sure that the business climate is somewhat promoted in anticipation of a loss of business to this uh, development in Springfield. Okay. So there are a number of um, recommendations that we make. Um, again, there are areas that we don't think there is going to be an impact or that we can quantify. Um, and. For example, the ambulance service, there is no cost of the ambulance service to the town of East right. Long Meadow. Um, uh, having worked with the ambulance companies in the past, I can tell you that East Long Meadow is probably one of the more profitable ones for uh, AMR. Uh, but you have a contract with them, with them, which is a very good contract, which has a response time, and it's going to be up to them mm -hmm. to deal with that response time as opposed to the town. So, the, for example, so we don't see an impact there where you could ask for mitigation funds. So we've uh, tried to put this all together in a package that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We've uh, given you numbers to work with and with town council for negotiation purposes. It's a starting point. Again, it's very fluid, but we're, um, we're here to assist in any way we can. Okay. So the next step from here would be um, now that we have a proposal and once we, and, and please 
give me your input at any moment here when I start to stick my foot in my mouth. Um, we go from here with this proposal basically to MGM and then it becomes a back and forth and because you know you're never gonna I assume they're gonna lowball anything and then we start I think that the, uh, the procedure probably would be to review um, Mr. Albano's proposal mm -hmm. in, in some depth to accept those portions which we think are reasonable and supportable based on the input that we receive from our department heads um, and then those areas which maybe the town fathers or department heads had not considered to look at it and analyze and speak with Mr. <coughs> and his associates about um, supporting documentation for those requests and then we also have a proposed um, surrounding community <coughs> agreement from MGM which was received um, last week which um, doesn't dovetail with this but needs to be blended uh, or attempt to be blended because it's it, it, you can't either be blended or it's going to have to be an either or situation mm -hmm. and that's something that the board is going to have to make a determination of at some point in the near future um, uh, the town administrator and I um, and uh, any selectman who's available have we have a meeting scheduled with local council for MGM tomorrow to question him about the specific uh, terms that and provisions that they have placed in their agreement and hopefully we'll be in a better position to understand some of the nuances of the language that's in the agreement um, and then be better able to explain to the board the options that you have available. Okay. What time is the meeting tomorrow? I'm sorry? What time is the meeting tomorrow? Nine o'clock. Where is it? Uh, at his office, across the parking lot. Oh, okay. okay. Which him? It's here. Oh, okay. Well, it's not bad. Nice week. Okay, yeah. All right, so our next step then is obviously to review this. So then we'll, which yeah. we should probably do in short order because I know we're on a time frame with all of this. I'll be at the meeting tomorrow at night. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, does the board have any questions? No. Oh. Um, very thorough job. Thank it, you. It was yes, good. Yes, thank you very much. Very nicely put again. Now, there, you know how we had uh, discovered that there's no input on impact on some of the, the, the sections where there's no impact. If we can come up with something, you'll include that in there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, again, we use the reasonable uh, cause clause. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking to various department heads, I could not wrap my arms around something that is reasonable. Mm -hmm. That would be a fair presentation by the town to go into negotiations. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people I'm sure that are smarter than I am yeah. that maybe oh, no, could no. find a link here, but I, I could not find I any just, that is it's the schools to be reasonable. That I just believe they're, they're going to be impacted, and, and I, I, I hear you. There may not be a way to prove it, but maybe we can find a study. We're open. Yes, sir. By way of just explanation to the public that's listening to this meeting, the, um, the statute requires that the developer, the casino proposer, uh, negotiate with uh, impacted communities. They use the term surrounding, but just because you're a surrounding community doesn't necessarily under the statute mean that you're an impacted community. Um, and therefore, uh, MGM has taken the position that basically the outlying surrounding communities are not impacted communities. However, even though they've taken that position, they are, they are saying in their proposal that in order to um, keep a uh, good relationship with the surrounding um, neighborhoods and communities, that they are willing to enter into a surrounding communities agreement, which is their right under the contract, even though they might not, we might not be determined to be a surrounding community who's impacted if the matter is thrown before the uh, Gaming Commission. It was the ultimate determiner if there is a dispute between the developer and the community as to whether you qualify under the statute for mm -hmm. compensation for the project. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, so we will review this, and then Thank you. we will, I assume you'll be walking in step with us from there on in, so. Uh, Anything you need, Mr. Chairman, we're okay. there for you. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, so you thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the open session minutes of October 1st, 2013? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, is there a motion to approve the open session minutes of October 15th? So moved. Uh, 2013. Uh, is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to approve the open session minutes of October 21st, 2013? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to accept the executive session minutes of October 1st, 2013? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to accept the executive session minutes of October 15th, 2013. Aye. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion to accept the executive session minutes of October 21st, 2013. So moved. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, under old business. Um, okay, Nick, we've got, coincidentally, our next item is the casino impact. We have an uh, update from November 12th to 15th. It's just uh, business for the board to catch up on. Okay. Yep. Okay. And okay. believe the item B as well. Okay, yeah, there's just a there's notification from request of some records. And a uh, uh, traffic meeting update? <coughs> um, I the chairman I would uh, defer to Selectman Thorpe if she had anything to add about the traffic meeting from yesterday well uh, not much I mean uh, attorney uh, attorney Mr. Orlando and our attorney our counsel was there um, we don't agree with everything that they put out um, and it's going to be addressed in our report that we sent mm -hmm. that's being sent to them so um, I think they came up with 5.5 percent of an increase in traffic for us and um, it may be believed that it is definitely going to be higher than that. Well, it seems so. like it's just because of the Route 83 corridor. Once yeah. Uh, yeah, it comes out to be 70 cars more during rush hour, and uh, we think it's going to be a little more than that. Okay. So, already, I, I, it was to we begin. met the met the guy from GPI yeah. who's doing the study and mm -hmm. good. So it's a, as as. Mr. Mayor said it's a fluid thing, so we'll it continue to get definitely the definitely uh, flowing. Okay. Um, next item is Nick the Charter Franchise Renewal. They're starting what two years in advance. Yep. Uh, okay. This is just uh, a reminder that um, yeah. uh, probably uh, need to get the meeting going um, as soon as possible, and I'll work with Selectman Thorpe. Okay. Uh, on that. Sure. Okay. Okay. And then the next item is a notification. Um, Right after they want the renewal, they notification about their fees, their rates mm -hmm. for uh, upcoming rate changes for 2014, which I mm -hmm. noticed some of them go up a dollar, and the only ones, the, there's one that goes down significantly, which is the, um, I forgot exactly which one, one it up was. three dollars. So. Yeah. So. Um, That's a big jump, and it's the one, the smallest package. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the basic or whatever uh, yeah. it is. Goes up, yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, when that jumps, the, the taxes and everything that's based on the fee is going to yep. jump as well. Yep. So those it's just definitely a conversation. Right. Those are just notifications. When do we have that annual meeting where the five or six taxpayers come and complain about charter? Well, that would be part of. Um, that's what happens. That, that would part of wait. be part of the renewal process. Okay. The, the, um, so the cable advisory committee would meet and discuss the outline of what to do and when to propose um, these public meetings and so forth. Um, but generally there uh, would be at least two uh, likely in, at this point in 2014 okay. um, to provide those findings to right. them and have them at the meeting. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Uh, the next item is an update on the regional grants, Nick. The Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, if I could just uh, go through them. Um, the CDBG, the Community Development Block Grant, just uh, uh, wanted to advise the board that uh, on one part of the grant, the housing portion, that there is a waiting list for housing projects. However, uh, there, uh, the uh, grant administrator, in this case, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, is uh, willing and able to put people on a list for emergency so that if anything opens up, 
they can contact the PVPC directly, not this office. It would be PVPC because they handle all of the registration and the administration of it. Um, but and that number is seven eight one six zero four five. They'd ask for the administrator for the housing uh, project uh, for the uh, housing improvement project. Um, then the, if the next one, the shared public health nurse. I just advised the board that the paperwork went in uh, to approve, to, well, to be participate in the 2014 grant application. Uh, the in, information tech, your information technology director, also sent in um, a grant uh, request to become part of a community, a regional community portal. portal and maybe the next time he comes in, he could explain a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. um, human resources, uh, remind the board that uh, we've participated in a study. We've received a report back, and uh, Joshua Garcia would like to schedule a time to meet with the board uh, to discuss that and uh, perhaps see whether or not uh, he'd like to go forward. He's also really listed a number of options how it could proceed. So. I wonder if the board might have any uh, kind of idea either this evening or maybe at the next meeting how you'd like me to proceed. Would you want Mr. Garcia to come in and meet with you? and Or would you like some other combination? Wouldn't be a bad idea to have Mr. Through yeah, the chair, have sure. Mr. Garcia come in. It's a very good idea. That way we can um, okay. try and schedule and then maybe for the next meeting. Sure. For the ninth, yeah. 11. 11. I'm sorry. <laughs> Short term memory yeah. loss. And then. Uh, the, the DLTA? Right. Um, we have not really received um, uh, too much response on, on projects, um, although uh, there's still time. And if there is, um, I would, if there are signatures uh, required, uh, I'll let the chairman know because I think that's what would be the appropriate protocol. Uh, but it has been sent out to um, all department heads. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item, there's uh, we have four candidates for the MRC. We have our director here. Would you like to come up? How are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So you're pointing how many? One? Four. Four? So yes. four candidates are appointing four? Yes. All in favor? Are <laughs> 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 um, so we have four up, um, four that we would like to appoint to the team. Mm -hmm. um, one is Todd Gaudet, mm -hmm. and he is actually a member of our CERT team also. Um, very ready and able to serve. Donald Heath, he is a retired teacher and he is active with the rec department. He does a lot of volunteering with them. He does. Brad Hoffman, he is a risk manager over at Mass Mutual and does some volunteer time with the field club of Longmeadow. And Kyle Murray, who is a mental health He's involved with the mental health industry, and um, that is something that actually would be really beneficial for our team. All four candidates attended the November 2nd train-a-thon, so they're trained and ready to go upon your approval. Okay. Does the board have any uh, questions or comments? Uh, comment to that. I just want to applaud you for doing a great training. Um, it's a great day. You did a great job putting it together. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, any further comments? Uh, um, the application. Who's who's generating the application? The application was designed by the town administrator with a cover letter that okay. comes from me. And mm -hmm. they go through a quarry process, which you already know about. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, in light of that, is there a motion to accept the four candidates for the uh, Medical Reserve Corps that are presented before us? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Um, so I'd just like to keep your attention just for a couple more minutes. I know you guys are busy. busy. Um, we have about a total of 21 
on our team now mm -hmm. and just to let you know all except two have been trained gone through okay. the training so that's a pretty big accomplishment Good. and did want to thank you for your support for the train-a-thon that we had recently we had 45 people that attended and as you know the mobile disaster field kitchen was there they did a great job with lunch and everybody did enjoy the content some a little dry but um, the person that was doing the training she was good yep and um, also wanted to let you know I think you already know this but the MRC received a an award <coughs> of sorts. We came in seventh <coughs> in the nation. Yes. Yeah. Well, 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 congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. So outstanding. The entire nation. Yeah. Outstanding. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't inundate us with numbers yeah, here. Okay? Right? It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Top very surprised. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And also just to let you know that I will be doing a presentation on preparedness on behalf of the MRC on Monday, December 3rd over at Emeritus. And it'll just be a short presentation, um, but a good way to get word out that we are here in town and ready to go. Okay. okay. And that's it. That's fine. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Have a great <laughs> holiday. Yes, it was a long day. <laughs> yeah, it was. Thank you. Have a great holiday. You too. Okay, next on our agenda is the uh, Brown property. There's a request from the Summit Soccer Association to um, to consider proceeding as far as um, soccer fields that were part of a, a potential plan when this was first presented years ago. And uh, from what I understand, there's also in light of that the rec department has some thoughts and planning board has some thoughts on the property and the buildings up there so i guess is that is that where we stand or is there anything further to add right we uh, mr chairman you have uh, just as you summarized um so what it is is all of these parties seem to have an interest in meeting with the board and discussing these ideas right and the question to the board is how best to proceed do you uh, want to have that as a meeting during uh, an appointment during a regular meeting do you want to meet with each group individually over a couple of meetings um, how would you like me to schedule it if the board is indeed interested in per, you know pursuing and listening to these ideas well other than obviously we know what the soccer association is looking for um, is there any way we can get the ideas from the other two groups before they meet with us and then meet with them That's a great idea. so we have an idea to review what they're thinking well, I mean, does that, you know, is that something you think is feasible? I can uh, go back to um, recreation and go back to the planning board and see if we can get some more of the specifics. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, the next item, we have a request from the American Legion. Um, every year, the American Legion does a wonderful job on Memorial Day, putting together the Memorial Day uh, ceremony that we have in front of and inside the high school. And I guess it's come to their attention, which I didn't realize. They, they put out... Um, a sum of money during the course of this for for various items relating to this event and I guess there's they found out that there's money through the town that can be used for this instead of they may using volunteer money um, I don't know if you can shed any more light on w what fund they're possibly thinking of sure uh, Mr. chairman th I had a conversation with the town accountant and uh, we believe that there would be funding uh, perhaps through a celebrations account um, so that going forward if the board so desired that this could be part of that budget mm -hmm. um, however in this particular case because the bills that are in question here were uh, accrued in the previous, tax, in the previous, previous year, year yeah. the best that we could do at this point if the board does uh, decided is add this as one of the uh, components of a prior year's bill article for annual town meeting um, which those do occur on occasion. Mm -hmm. Recall that that would be, um, I believe, would require a nine tenths uh, vote at that point. The total here, I think, something like seven, seven hundred or so. Yeah, about seven. Looks like seven seventy-seven or somewhere in there. Um, yeah, that would be fine. And, so and also, um, so we can approve going forward using the money out of the 
Ooh. celebrations fund for this because obviously it's not a legion event it's a town event and they're doing it on our on the town's behalf so um it's been it's it's been nice of them obviously all along to get their volunteers to pay for this uh, or get you know volunteers uh, donations towards this um but obviously being a town event and having having the money there i don't see a, i personally don't see a problem with it i don't know if anyone else has a especially when we're only talking seven eight hundred dollars i have so no problem with it i don't have a problem with it but just where did the shirts go to the t-shirts mm -hmm. i believe those are the don't the kids wear those the kids, oh the kids are wearing the shirts. i got it they yep, you're absolutely up. right yeah. thank you thank yeah. you there you go well, mr chairman I, based on what i'm hearing uh, from conversation from the board at least this could be possibly brought up as a, a prior year's bill um well maybe it, that's something i'd like to know don't necessarily need to know tonight because that's obviously annual town meeting mm -hmm. uh, but then going forward for the budget process which will begin um, put this in as a specific so that it would be allocated a certain amount of money perhaps right. every year for this activity yeah, yeah, I was gonna dollars. make a motion to that regard I don't know if you want to set a dollar amount or I, I I don't even know that I necessarily need a vote from the board other than okay. to just yeah, because the money's already been in. set aside right right for the for Th there is money in a Celebr celebrations mm -hmm. account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's my understanding. Yes. All right. Then I assume, based on the tone of the board, that everyone's in favor yes. of doing that. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So and then, we'll, and then we'll discuss before the before the town meeting. Obviously, well in advance of the warrants, how to put that on and maybe get them reimbursed for this past year at least. Okay. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, the next item: there are a large number of liquor licenses in there to be signed and we have to sign those there's a there's a time limit on these because these basically have to be mailed tomorrow so we have to get these signed tonight um, and sent out to the state so they can be returned in what is it the begin first week second week of December that's uh, generally what we hope okay. to get yeah okay all righty and just to lay that out what will happen is these will go to the state the state will conduct their review of the applications and then um, return them back to us as quickly as they can Re remember they're doing it for all the towns in the commonwealth mm -hmm. and then from there we hold on to the licenses we notify the uh, license holders that they've come back that they can come pick them up uh, with payment mm -hmm. and you know uh, we hope not to we strive not to but sometimes there are uh, those license holders that sort of wait until the last minute but we do what we can to encourage them to come in early okay you're ready um, very good and the next item uh, it's the Bay Path College groundbreaking recap which I will defer to Selectman Baranski well I just wanted to say that I was thrilled to be there um, on behalf of the board and um, wanted to keep this myself but there was nowhere to put it in my house so I wanted to present to you Mr. Chairman okay. the official shovel I kept some of the dirt on it <laughs> actually Job inscribed because <laughs> I got a shovel now. and do you want to wear the helmet no, too? That's no. okay. It'll mess up my but I figured we could um, give this to Nick and yeah, so could, um, put that put, in the Slightman's office or somewhere in that. it was a, a lovely event if you want to elaborate on it Nick I, I would agree um, 100 percent it was a very very nice event very uh, celebratory event and to really just uh, commend Selectman Bronski on behalf of the board I think she uh, summed it up very well in her remarks very good thank so you both thank you both for being our here. first shovel <laughs> I got about a hundred <laughs> jokes and I'm not gonna <laughs> touch them so <laughs> <laughs> all right the, 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 ne <laughs> the next two items under new business um, I'm going to, I, I, I'll explain them and then, or at least one of them, and then I'm going to recuse myself because I have um, personal knowledge of the, the participants in both of them. Uh, the next item, item 18, uh, there was a request from the Arbor's kids. Um, originally, this was for what they mistakenly called a vendor's fair, which, as we all found, as I found out as a planning board informed me, when you're in the Industrial Garden Center of East Meadow, you cannot have a, you cannot have retail sales. So therefore, what they were planning on doing was having, um, it's basically, a, a, what it's basically turning out to be is a holiday open house to, to promote the arbors, get people in there to see the building and everything. And I worked with them, I worked with the planning board, and what we, what we came up with was any vendors who still want to come, obviously, because if they can't sell anything, it might not behoove them to come there, but they can always take orders to be filled at a future date and pay for it at a future date. But um, 
it's going to be a holiday open house and it's i believe it's on december 5th from 5 to 9 p.m and um what they're requesting is they're having it they're having a, a firm cater it and they're requesting a one-day liquor license for beer and wine for that day and a temporary food service permit and the changes that were made between the management of the arbors and the planning board were sufficient for the planning board to not have a problem with it anymore so uh, after much much negotiation we got that uh, we got that through and everybody was happy um, the next item um, is a request from Bentley's Bistro to stay open until 1 a.m. actually on tomorrow night which is uh, the, night, the night before Thanksgiving in conjunction with an East Long Meadow reunion um, once again this was originally published at, at, as 2 a.m. which which we got some flack about because they cannot be open until 2 under their permit and we, <coughs> we knew that so they corrected that to 1 a.m. and um, other than that I think I'm gonna go fill my water and I'll let you guys can flip to see who takes over from here. So. Do you want to start or don't mean to? We'll go ahead. Let me leave her. Okay. It just seems so strange. Alcohol and children. I would let, entertain a motion to accept the request of the Arbor's Kids um, and Jean Santos uh, to hold a vendor fairs for their one day liquor license, beer and wine, Thursday, December 5th from 5 to 9 p.m. So moved. Second out of necessity. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, also <coughs> accept a motion to grant them a temporary food service permit uh, approval pending. Planning board response. Insurance is on file. Um, so moved. Second out of necessity. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Do you want to take the next one? Okay. The next one is a request for um, uh, Bentley's Bistro to stay open until 1 p.m. on November 27th in conjunction with an East Long Meadow reunion. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. I'm sorry. Okay. Did I say p.m.? I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll try again. Request from ben Bentley's Bistro to stay open until 1 a.m. November 27, 2013 in conjunction with an East Long Meadow reunion. So moved. Second out of necessity. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that moves. Very good. And that's Mr. within their, their, um, their yes. agreement with planning board also. Mr. Chairman? Hmm. <laughs> well, he didn't think we could handle that quickly, I guess. I know. <laughs> Did Nick go get him? I'm interested in okay. your business. I want to talk to you about it. Sure. We missed you. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Now the next. Thank you very much. Now the next item, we have a request from the Masonic Temple for a one-day liquor license, beer and wine, for Saturday, December seventh, uh, from six p.m. to eleven p.m. at Mas in the Masonic Hall in conjunction with a baby shower. Is there a motion to approve the one-day liquor license for Saturday, December 7th? So Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Seems like they're our biggest banquet hall in the city in the town. Mm. <laughs> just, um, and the next item is a request from Father Peter Swire, the rector of St. Mark's Episcopal Church, for a three-day liquor license of beer and wine for Friday, December 6th, 2013, through Saturday, December 7th. Uh, from 6.30 and 9 p.m. and Sunday, December 8th from 1.30 to 4 p.m. Um, I, I don't know if it matters. It doesn't say in, in regard to what, Nick, but does that, uh, you know, what the event is. I don't know if that matters. Oh, they're um, offering a play, a Christmas Carol. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, yeah. All right. Is there a motion to approve the three-day liquor license? For so the, moved. Is there a second? Second. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And also an entertainment license for the same event. And their insurance is on file. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the next item is from Maya uh, for as an agility recovery notice, which was, when I read it, was nothing like I thought it would be when I heard the words. <laughs> Just to uh, briefly report to the board that I uh, recently uh, received this notice that you have in your packet about agility recovery and subsequently uh, participated in a webinar that Maya put on with this firm 
uh, Agility Recovery is a, <coughs> a service that Maya is offering its members to uh, be a resource. One of the main points is to be a resource to obtain <coughs> materials and, uh, and, in some cases, personnel to assist in getting municipal government back up and running as quickly as possible in the wake of a disaster. Mm. Um, and so it would have everything from modular office space to information technology equipment and furniture available. And they are national, so they can draw draw this um, the materials from other places that, for, that won't be affected and do it in a, a fairly rapid fashion. In some cases, as quickly as half a day, depending on the on the ask. Um, so that was a very uh, a good service. Doesn't cost the town anymore, and we have that now available. Uh, there are also other features within that that are detailed and would be terrific to roll out over time. Um, employees and the town could upload, for example, emergency management documents and have them stored on those secure servers. Um, and then if people wanted to get down and employees wanted to get down to the point where they wanted to upload their own personal plans uh, mm -hmm. for emergency response, um, what, you know, down to the point of figuring out what to put in your uh, kits uh, and where your family members are going to be and all those phone numbers. So it was a very detailed presentation, um, just beginning to scratch the surface of it, but it is something that we have available mm -hmm. to us. Okay, good. That's, you know, you, you always go back to that October two years ago mm -hmm. when uh, when the power is out for such a long period of time, and it's nice to know, it's mm -hmm. nice to know we have this, we hope we never need it, but it's, it's you know, it will make things a little easier <coughs> if something like that should happen in the future. Well, one of the bigger uh, needs in, in a, this type of a situation is uh, power generators. Right, right. And because they are national, they can draw. And so, because if it happens like it did, everybody's going to be looking for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And something yeah. like that, I, I think that that would test the scale of what they could do, but they seem pretty confident to be able to help out when necessary. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It's Wonderful. Really bad, yeah, that's good. That's great. Uh, the next item is neighbor to neighbor, which I think it seems like, based on what I read, we used to do in conjunction with the, um, what's that called? The um, <coughs> welcome wagon type thing? Yeah, there's some of them. Something similar to Welcome Wagon. Yeah, I would say Welcome Wagon. Yeah. I mean, it's like that's I'm showing my age, but you know. Yeah, what I mean? that's what I would say. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> welcome Wagon. Yeah. But I think this is a great idea. Um, I don't know if the rest of the board got to read this little uh, Welcome from Some Metal letter, mm -hmm. but. Um, go ahead. I, I received an email from the group. Um, this letter, uh, save for the updating with the current board members, uh, is what the letter was and that was from 2008 and my question to the board is whether or not uh, one or all amongst you might want to take a try at putting together the letter or if you'd like to see a couple of uh, drafts from me and uh, have the board work on it but either way um, just opening it up I would love to see another draft <laughs> okay sure not that it was bad or anything but yeah, 2008 well, well, yeah, but it, seven it, years basi it basically yeah. says the same thing. I mean, yeah. it's a, but, but yeah, if you let's see what Nick can well, so fly it, it up For example, in here, it refers to East Long Meadow uh, is a green community, and certainly we are. Um, and but it refers to a, a state oh, recycling yeah, effort yeah. that we were third in at the time. Mm -hmm. and I don't know where we are today. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Point taken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so we'll, I'll have something before the board okay. at the next. That would be okay. Great. great. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Uh, the next item. Um, I don't know if anyone watches the news I know you don't <laughs> I do <laughs> but from uh, the ABC News uh, from Tomorrow. 5 to 6 30 mm -hmm. this week I think they're continuing it mm -hmm. they're, they're doing um, they're, they're highlighting a town and they highlighted I think South Hadley Monday and tonight I forgot who it was but they're highlighting East Long Meadow tomorrow night tomorrow. in conjunction with that they're doing a food drive for the senior center uh, they're gonna be broadcasting it all day um, Carolyn Brown and our, 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 I almost said rec director again, our um, <coughs> Council senior Aging. center, okay. Council on Aging director is going to be um, on Channel 40 at 6.30 tomorrow morning discussing <laughs> this and they're going to be broadcasting from, I believe, the media room at, this, at the senior center during the whole hour and a half news. Um, in the first segment they're going to be discuss they're going to be um, talking to Carolyn about certain things relating to the town. The second segment from 5.30 to 6, they've been saddled with me 
And then the third segment at 6 o'clock, they're trying to get Gordon Smith uh, from the school department. So in between, they're going to be highlighting different businesses in town. I believe Ed Carroll is going to be doing some, well, once again, depending on the weather, some location shots at the new Bay Path and um, the, uh, the Norcross House and the um, depot. And So it should be a, a, a good... Uh, a good little advertisement for the town. We were trying to get the high school cheerleaders over there, but I think we're going to get a representation of students to be in the background over at the school to uh, sort of raise a ruckus and, and make it a fun event. So if anyone uh, wants to watch it, obviously it'll it'll be on Channel 40. Mm -hmm. so. uh, the next item, notification from Western Mass Electric regarding vegetation management, Nick. This is the annual notice sent to the board uh, outlining outlining their plan and if the board has any comments on it uh, they are looking for the input okay great uh, the next item um, it's a letter from Carl Olin our chairman of the 4th of July parade committee and I don't know if you want to read this I got it right here if you want to read it into um, <laughs> yeah, read it into the record the computer, because um, right here. for those of you who whether you've been here forever, or whether you're new to town, or whether you just come here for the parade, which would probably mean you wouldn't be watching this, but um, Carl and his crew, his crew have done a tremendous a jo job for for a couple of decades on this parade, and unfortunately, I'll I'll, I'll let the I'll let our clerk read the letter, and then uh, we'll go from there with the comments. Okay, two members of the board of selectmen, due to recent family events, future personal commitments, 2014 will be the last year serving as parade chairman. I have been a member of the parade committee for over 30 years, served as the chairman for over 20 years, all of which I have greatly enjoyed, but it's time to move on. Some information regarding the current parade committee. There are 10 members who plan and organize the parade, serving in following positions. Chairman, publicity, participation forms, and organizing uh, participation forms, including all mailings and preparing parade lineups. Treasurer, community and town business contacts, float, general areas and music coordinator. Only four members are town residents and the other six are non-residents. Seven members have served for 20 years, one for 15 and two for three years. Over the years we have appealed for new members via press releases, LCAT and meetings with the selectmen as there were concerns regarding an aging committee, years of service, more non-residents than residents serving and personal commitments. Unfortunately, these attempts did not produce the resident serving and personal commitments. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, these attempts did not produce the anticipated results of new members. Consequently, I've canvassed the present committee as to their intentions to serve on beyond 2014 parade, and nine members will be resigning after 2019, 2014. Our music coordinator will be the only returning member, and he is a non-resident. Other group, another group vital to the parade um, is the mar are the marshals who assemble all the units on the parade day. Many of these dedicated volunteers have dwindled recently, resulting in logistical difficulties on parade day. We are now in a critical stage regarding the future of the parade. The parade committee, however, will commence its formal meeting in January 2014 um, and meeting, meet monthly until June when we meet two times a month. We hope that the community residents will step up and join us so we can work with them in serving as mentors. All those involved in the parade have enjoyed presenting this annual event for the community. We also have anticipated the tremendous, appreciated the tremendous support from the town residents, all town departments, businesses, civic groups, members of the private sector, participants, spectators, and all who assist in, uh, sit and assist behind the scenes. East Longmeadow is well known for its 4th of July events, such as the carnival, concert, fireworks, and parade, which would not take place without the dedicated volunteers who make it happen. In our case, we have reached a stage where new volunteers must step forward and take over the reins. I have thoroughly enjoyed my involvement in this patriotic event and extend my appreciation to everyone who has helped, but especially to a truly dedicated group of people who are members of the parade committee and marshals. We ask that you join us in planning the 2014 parade, but also realize that if volunteers, if volunteers do not replace members leaving, the parade as it presently exists will not take place in 2015. Anyone interested in joining the committee can call Carl at 525-2952 or the selectman's office at 525-5427, respectfully. Um, obviously, 
the parade is a, is a, as you just term, a huge feather in the town's cap, and, and it's mm -hmm. something that people look forward to. And this uh, obviously is a serious, serious situation. I know for years Carl has come before us and said, "We need help. We need help. Yeah. We need new blood." And it hasn't really happened. But now we're at the, um, you know, put up or shut up stage where if we don't get, if we don't get people to um, to help out and, and join these committees, then after this year we may not have a parade. Um, I was even thinking to the extent that if someone was really interested in getting involved and thought they could even take over as far as Carl's position, it would be a great idea if someone was interested in doing that to step up now and sort of uh, shadow him from Absolutely. now till the parade. And that Absolutely. way, yeah. they're not going in green next year mm -hmm. and uh, and not having any idea what to exactly. do. So okay. you know, um, all we can do is ask. Um, if there's anybody out there who uh, who wants to help with this, it's a wonderful cause. It's a wonderful event. It's it's it, it, it's. You know, it's put the town on the map in certain mm -hmm. circumstances, and it'd be a shame to see it go. So, if anyone can help, you've got the phone numbers. Uh, please step forward and help us. Great. Before we before we move on, just one last item here. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers last year, the East Long Meadow and Long Meadow football teams had a food drive in conjunction with the Thanksgiving Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, this year, due to technical difficulties and and problem communication problems, we, myself and Paul Santanello, along Meadow Selectman, weren't able to sort of get the coaches on the same page um, to get a food drive going before the game. However, there is going to be a food drive at the game, so anyone who can, uh, who can donate, if you bring, if you bring a non-perishable food item to, uh, to the game, which is in Long Meadow this year, after the game, these items will be split up between the, the East Long Meadow Food Bank and the Long Meadow Food Bank. So just, uh, uh, just a word out there um, that 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 is going on. So anyone who could, was going to the game, that would be a great help. Thank you. So is is there a little wager going? On? Well, it's not a wager. There, you know, we have the Selectmen's Cup. Yeah, that's all. Which which unfortunately, I've been on the board for four and a half years. I watched Selectman Driscoll give it to them the first year. I gave it to them <laughs> the next two years. I'm hoping this year I get it at the you game. You get it so, at the game. Okay. So I'll be there. Um, from what I understand, not to cast dispersions. As of, we had a little press conference the other day, and as of then, uh, Long Meadow can't seem to find the cup. So, <laughs> so I, know, I know they built a new school, so it's somewhere in there. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully I'm not getting a Starbucks cup if we win on, yeah. uh, on Thursday, but uh, hopefully they'll find it. I know there were a few more places they were going to look. Look, at, okay. So. All right. Come on, Lancers. There, you got to find go. out where that is. And now I will uh, turn it over to you for the Board of Health. Okay. Um, uh, uh, item 27. You have, um, we had discussions with regards to Sonny Mart's um, <coughs> certificate. He has completed the uh, serve safe, um, the serve safe uh, course. I did follow up with a phone call um, to the place just because we needed something that, that said he actually passed the test because in the um, letter that we received it said it would be available in three weeks. So what she did is she did send an email over and we'll put that with it saying that he actually did, she's not going to say he did very well, but he did do very well. And we'll say that he actually passed. Okay, so we great. can put that with that. Great. So um, uh, the only other thing that I was looking at was the, contingent, the other contingency was about with regards to the violations. Um, I have not spoken with Amy um, with regard to the violation, but I would think if there were violations that she would have contacted um, the uh, de um, Selectman Bronski. Yeah. And so are there still outstanding? Um, well, I believe I believe that she's addressed. I'm looking at her last note was as of the 22nd, which mm -hmm. was earlier this week. Okay. And. Um, without going into a lot of detail. Okay, all right. Then um, you, well, let's just put it this way, that, that the, the, um, the issue with the serve safe certificate has been resolved. Has. And then we will right. um, and just kind of And her report get is page 85 of the packet. Okay, all right then. All right, so now we'll go to the rabies update clinic, which is uh, Mr. O'Connor has let... Uh, or excuse me, our animal control officer is let us know that there were 24 dogs and cats that were vaccinated and three new licenses that were issued during the um, clinic. He did admit that there was, it was a little bit lower than their average of 58, but he um, anticipates that the one 
that will the next clinic that will be held in March um, should pick up and um, is, he'll let us know a date as soon as ANW um, Brown and the HCC uh, Vec Tech Club they come up with a with a date. Great. Uh, Thanksgiving trash. This is just a reminder of the Thanksgiving trash schedule. Residents are advised that the trash pickup will follow the holiday schedule for Thanksgiving week. November 25th to 30th, trash pickup will follow its normal schedule Monday through Wednesday. There will be no pickup on Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 28th. Thursday's pickup will be on Friday, and Friday's pickup will be on Saturday. Recyclables pickups will follow the same schedule. This will be a paper recycle um, week. They're reminding you to um, put your, your uh, trash at the curb no later than 7 a, excuse me, no later than 7 a.m. and leave it there until 6 p.m. or when it's picked up, obviously. In the event that the trash is not picked up by 6 p.m. due to poor weather, residents should leave or put their trash out for pickup day the next day by 7 a.m. If you have any questions, you can call Allied Waste at 413 592-9411 or certainly call the Board of Selectmen at 5413-525-5400 extension 1100. And that is it for Thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is Town Council. Excuse on up, me. Oops. Oh, the oh, dumb side. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Madam, Madam Chairman, there mm -hmm. is an item under new business. New business. And I'm going to refer that to you, Nick, if you don't mind. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has been given notice about a condition on a property in town at uh, 299 Maple Street uh, that has uh, been observed by Mass DEP as being used as a dumping site, mm -hmm. um, which is in violation. The b uh, Board has, within 60 days of the date of this letter, and the date of this letter is November 20th, uh, so until January 20th, um, submit to Mass DP, DP a report containing any findings on the matter, proposals for further action if warranted, and there's a phone number to contact Mr. Kleins at uh, Mass DEP. Um, my recommendation would be that as soon as she is able to uh, have uh, your health acting health agent go out and inspect mm -hmm. the site in light of this letter and report back to the board. I figured that would. Be. I'm in agreement with that. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you, yeah. and thank you. All right, Town Council. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Happy Thanksgiving. Good evening. Good evening. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Okay. It doesn't look like we have many, if any, uh, maybe one or two executive session. Uh, I would think item 36. Yeah. Negotiations with MGM. Yeah. That would be uh, executive under discussion with council. Attorney client privilege discussion. Okay, how about 40? Uh, would be item 40 and 40, actually, 40 would be the only other item. Right. Item 42 is a negotiation item for employment, but it's just a notice okay. to you, so it's really not an executive, yeah. okay. an executive issue. All righty. Yeah. And then uh, um, council. item 41 is oh. information. From uh, number 41, Nick was wondering if that was executive. No. Okay. All righty. Uh, 31, Building and Benefits Administration Offices. Um, Nick, if you want to. Uh, just uh, to advise the board, and, and I think if you're, you've been in Town Hall, you could see that uh, the office renovations um, are proceeding as planned. Uh, Kareen, the uh, Kareen trained at Gizzi, the uh, Benefits Administration Manager, is already in. Uh, her new office or her different office if you will and has been seeing uh, employees in there and the DPW uh, is working on the other built uh, other office right adjacent to the clerk's office they've been doing from what I can see a terrific job about uh, getting things going and really organized um, talking with mr. Fenny uh, Dan and I were at a meeting with him today and the thought is it may be until about the middle of December, maybe you know the third week or so, before it uh, would be complete, it will hinge a bit on when some windows come in because there are going to be some sliding windows in that office to serve the public, and then mm -hmm. another one between um, uh, Dan and saying? the clerical staff. So okay. anyway, it's, it's moving along as planned. Okay, great. 
and then we have a job description for review. So what I've presented to the board are just uh, my proposals for job descriptions for the two positions in the Board of Selectmen's office. Um, and what I would like to propose is with the board's approval of these or further refinement is to follow the model that the board has had to date and to allow for me once they uh, first perhaps appoint a liaison and uh, unless there are substantial uh, issues with the uh, job descriptions as presented uh, to assign a liaison uh, that would work with me uh, to post to allow for me to post them also for me to contact the union and say that these are what the job descriptions are and open that up for any impact bargaining that the um, that, that the union may be interested in. they've been previously they, they know what's going on yep. um, but this would be the formal more formal process so um, so I would volunteer to be your liaison if, if you'd like but that's sure. entirely up to you know, sure. mr. chairman you okay we'll you get the thumbs up so oh, okay. <laughs> that's fine Okay, and then uh, request to post a position and discussion of hiring protocol. I assume that would be part of this. That was sort of what I was getting to. Is so if if the would if the board's okay with all of this and you've just assigned a liaison, what I would ask is to follow that model of post um, and then to uh, with the liaison and myself um, conduct interviews. And then make recommendations to the board, okay. but certainly well, that's well. You need the job description first, right? Yeah. Right. And this is our first read on the job description. I would like to to really go through that because we should get two reads on it uh, at the board at the board's discretion. That's what I was putting out there. So, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so then what I'm hearing is that the uh, liaison and I will work together. Uh, Selectman Bronski and I will work sure. together upon the final approval of the job description to go forward with that recommendation process. Yeah. Okay, rather than work, uh, okay, that's yeah. what I and need. I, I read through it, it looks fine to me. So, um, nope. Okay. Just it All right. Okay, thank you. So then I'll uh, present to the board for December 11th. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, if there are, if there are any comments or, uh, uh, you know changes that the board uh, would like to see made please uh, by all means let me know and I can get the revisions out mm -hmm. okay great thank you Good job. Uh, the next item is a notification from the ABCC regarding uh, results for hearing right um, ABCC held a hearing with respect to an alleged violation by city line package stores selling alcohol to a minor after the hearing the board determined that uh, a can or a can of uh, beer had been sold to an underage individual and as a result of that violation the board issued a warning to the city line okay all right and next we have a request from attorney Larry Levine regarding um, as a proposal for parcels on Arch Street, Lindendale Street, Lindendale Ave, and Gaskell Street. Yeah, this was a request that had been submitted approximately a month ago, yep. a month and a half ago, by Attorney Levine, um, saying he had a client who had uh, interested in paying eighty thousand dollars for certain parcels of land, and the issue uh, where it stands before the board um, is to determine whether the board has any interest in um, selling uh, this piece of municipal property, and if so. Um, you would have to direct the um, town administrator to prepare an RFP for interested bidders um, with respect to it. And if you have no interest, then notify Attorney Levine and his client that the board isn't interested in selling municipal property at this point in time. Okay. Now, is that something, I mean, I personally don't know if the town has any interest in this. Is this something we could address with some department heads who, you know, as to whether they would think the town has any interest before we and we can proceed accordingly? Well, I, I think that the board has done that in several instances, so if that's what the board wanted to do, I'd get that right out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that'd be good. Then we, can, then we can go from there. Yeah. It's been a month since he asked. Anyway. Right, but in any event, if we do decide to sell the property, we're going to have to go get to an RFP it. anyway. It's got to go out the bid, so. Okay. All right, next item. Um, yes. Planning board has uh, 
But just one other question to, to that I'll be needing to speak with council about is so if the RFP process occurs is um, will we need to go back to the town meeting then for the disposition of it and that is one quite one conversation that I've not yet had with um, you need council. authority from you're going to need authority from town meeting in order to sell the property sure that that, that would be my understanding but that we haven't really had that chance to do. I mean, that. the process normally is if, if you know, when the municipality is looking to purchase or, or sell property, first to determine or enter into a contract for the purchase or the sale of property, and having complied with all of the requirements of the statutes, uh, and having the contracts contain a clause that makes it subject to approval by the uh, town meeting if it's appropriate. And the general laws require town meeting's approval for the sale of municipal property. So then you have the contract, and the uh, person desiring to purchase or sell the property to the community understands that even though the board may have agreed and may have agreed on price, that it still is subject to the town meeting determining by two-thirds vote that they are in favor of uh, upholding the position taken by the board. And I would assume, I should, you know, you should never assume, we've got three parcels of land here. We'll have to, uh, the RFP will be for them individually. You can't sell them in a group, right? Well, you could sell them in a group if they're contiguous. That I don't know. So I, don't I, believe know. That, I believe that they are. Are they? They were going to they be contiguous. There could be a building you could lot. Put in, you, could, you could do it two ways. You could actually put out bids for individual parcels mm -hmm. and also ask for a bid for the three parcels of one unit oh, okay. and determine which is most advantageous. Okay, great. All right, now the next item is a planning board response regarding the zoning bylaw change regarding no noisy foul. Yeah, I, I don't have any underlying information with respect to the, um, the, 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 the catalyst for the issue with the um, noise generated by roosters, apparently, or, or other uh, foul. But the planning board's response is after discussing with the board that they feel that it is not something that warrants a zoning bylaw change. However, they are suggesting that perhaps it's something that the Board of Health might want to address either under a general, they say under a general bylaw, but if you receive enough information to think that some action is warranted, you also could probably handle it under your own rules and regulations. But uh, I would think that first you would want to get a, a a detailed uh, report of the uh, locations in town where this is an issue to see if it really is a substantial issue in the community or it's a one or two spot location I that's driving this. I think this was generated by a specific complaint, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And didn't we talk about having it go under our, our noise ordinance that we already have? We did. Ooh. That was part of the discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll go back to that. Okay. All right. Next item is a letter from Attorney Rook regarding a decision from the Police Training Committee. Yeah, at your last meeting, you had received a letter from Attorney Rook regarding the uh, actions t uh, taken by the uh, Massachusetts Police Academy with respect to a, an East Long Meadow candidate and mm -hmm. looking for the board to take some specific action. Uh, you have in your packet a, draft, a, response, a right? draft letter from Labor Council uh, to Attorney Rook indicating the uh, town's uh, inability to really take any action in connection with this um, since the uh, appointment uh, of an officer is subject to the state statutory requirements under civil service and not something that the board has independent control over. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, is the, uh, I would ask then through you to the board if the uh, response from labor is acceptable yeah. and we'll, once it is we'll set that up okay yeah for I've, signatures I've, i know i've read it and it's 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 fine with me i mean it's i don't know if, if, Myself if as you, well. um, <coughs> i don't know if there's uh deaths anywhere has everyone had a chance to review it yep okay should we yeah, uh in its entirety okay uh then we'll I hate to hold off, but I guess we'll hold off till okay. our next meeting to get it hopefully approved and sent out. All right. Okay. Um, Bottom line, this is not going to prejudice anybody's rights in any event because you can't take any action. Anymore. Right. Right. No. Uh, yeah. You know. What? Okay. The next item is uh, there's a request from David Small, the approval of a BYO alcohol for proposed business, and Mr. Small is here tonight, so just to let you know. And yeah. I don't know if you read the details. 
of the type of business and whatnot, but uh, we're looking for. Let me, let me suggest to the board that um, you are the liquor license commissioners. Mm -hmm. You are authorized to issue licenses for the sale and dispensing of alcohol within the community. You have no authority to approve a business to issue or to give away alcohol. Well, they're not issuing or giving away. The people bring it in and themselves. Right, but it's, it's still being served on the premises. Okay. If they wish to, to attempt to do that and whatever liability they may face with respect to the actions that they're taking in doing that, but it is not a good practice. My recommendation is it's not a good practice for the board to be authorizing private businesses to be able to bring alcohol onto their premises to serve to their patrons or to people who are visiting their establishments. Okay. So what you're basically saying is, don't do it. Well, we we won't do anything. Right. But they can proceed with the business and it's at take whatever at their risks own risk. they wish okay. to take is a business risk right. in their own. So I'm just curious. I'm, I'm going to go to a place called Crazy Burger. Bring your own booze. So they don't have. A Where's this? In in Rhode Island. So I'm just wondering how, so they must buy their own insurance policies. I don't know, I mean, how, how does a business go about doing that then? Well, if, if actually I think, they're, I think they're nuts to do it, <laughs> to be honest with you. But if they are going to do that, if they even bother to tell their insurance carrier, then yes, they would have to, to get a liquor liability policy because they're supposed to be managing that location for appropriateness of everything, and if they're going to have people drinking alcohol there, then and there's no oversight by the community because there's no license issued, then they're responsible if patrons drink there, leave, and have uh, an incident um, off-site. Now this is a franchise, so I don't know if, uh, if uh, do, do they have um, we, our guidelines? Our, our, our insurance is specifically designed to cover liability in this instance. Okay. okay. And to say we, in the years we've taken over, they've never had an incident. Mm -hmm. And also, we will not be serving alcohol. They will be bringing it. We will supply a, a bottle opener, but uh, they pour it. Uh, they touch. It. We don't even top off their glass. Okay. Some some communities um, have actually regulations which prohibit um, non-licensed businesses from serving or allowing people to bring alcohol onto the premises. East Long Meadow, I, I don't no, believe, has ever that. adopted that. <coughs> Some communities actually allow businesses to bring, or to allow patrons to bring alcohol onto the premises. Um, as, we, it's, as we discussed, I don't mean to interrupt you, but there was a cooking business in town. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go and learn how to cook, and they basically did the same thing, although in that, in that idea in theory you could be using it for cooking but that wasn't the intent that people were actually having a glass of wine or whatever with dinner so and I believe as, a, as a dabbling artist I will tell you that wine does enhance the creative abilities while you're painting and I can see the I'm not not arguing with, with you on it I can see the from the business perspective I think it's it's an interesting one but from the town perspective and, and the those folks who have to make sure that we're, we're making the right decisions um, well, this is really not something you have any authority to right. issue or right. not issue. Right. right. This is a decision that the business owner makes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Unless and until the board were to determine that they were either not in favor of such an activity and prohibited. Right. But if it's not prohibited. Okay. Okay. But it does impact your existing licenses to the extent that someone who wanted a glass of wine or a beer who might go to an existing licensed facility would now not go there. Yeah, they're going to go there to paint. Uh, it's, it, but, it, it, but like anything, there's, well, a broader, I, there's a broader concept to the idea of yeah. allowing alcohol to come to businesses, not just the specific entity yep. that's here, but yep. um, other businesses that may exist mm -hmm. in the community. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could just, uh, for Mr. Small's benefit uh, point that the uh, planning director did make a comment, uh, a reminder that um, for the business that he would need to at least go to the planning mm -hmm. board and discuss with them the plans and then also go to the clerk's office for business certificate and so forth. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is a draft. There's a draft of the municipal space RFP and I know um, 
I haven't had a chance to really review it. I noticed it's, uh, it was, I think you took it from another uh, template from previous RFP, and I, I will review it because obviously I, I went and looked at a building in town, um, so I'll be happy to review this because I know sort of what the parameters we were looking for, and, and I'll get back to you in short order, and then we can tailor it to what we're looking for and go from there. All right? And then next item is the there's a draft of the performance review document. Second Wabronski? Yes, well, um, as you know, I think strongly about being able to evaluate our employees. Um, I think it's fair to us to, to go through the evaluation process, but it's fair to them as well. And while um, at town meeting we didn't get permission to go forward with a personnel policy, we do have, um, we can give ourselves permission to work with our own employees. And I would like to start a process where we uh, start doing some um, performance reviews um, with our employees, set goals, and go back in six months and review them. Um, and I submitted that particular review. It's um, one that I've used in the past. I thought it was pretty thorough, but I'd like to get the process started, um, especially now as we go forward. It can be tweaked, mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel very strongly that you know, we have employees who, who do great work, and if they haven't had an evaluation in I don't know how long, it's important to do that, but it's important for us, for those folks who are managing the employees, if they have an area that needs to be improved, it needs to be documented. If we want someone to do a better job and we're not documenting where they need to be doing a better job, then we have no grounds for correction. So I would very much like to get started on this process with those folks that we oversee. Now, who's going to do the reviewing? We would. How are we, I guess my question is, some of these items on here, how are we going to know the answers to these? Well, the way I do evaluations is I ask my employees to fill them out themselves as well. So I ask you to rate yourself, okay. and then I sit with you and I say, uh, and I ask you to tell me, you know, how did you rate yourself and why? Mm -hmm. It gives me an opportunity to learn about my employee that I things I might not know. That they're doing. Um, but also, it gives me an opportunity to say, well, really, I don't, I don't agree with that. I, you know, and share examples. It's a learning process mm -hmm. for me as a new selectman because I don't know a lot about what people are doing. But in the end. After going through the first process, I've learned a tremendous amount. I've talked about things that I think, based on talking with other people, areas they need to make improvements on. They've shared with me the areas that they're working on that I might not know. Mm -hmm. um, we set goals together, and we go back to it in six months and say, okay, well, how did you do? And, you know, these are areas I'd like you to improve on. Mm -hmm. okay. So <coughs> I would also consider... Um, and this is something that we can discuss. For example, um, offering this tool to some of the, the committees that work with various personnel that we oversee. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, for example, the Appropriations Committee might have some thoughts on some of our, our treasurer, our accountant. It, not that we would, it would be something for us to look at and take into effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, you know, the planning department might want to help with our building inspector and mm -hmm. his employees, and you know, um, the ones uh, that are under our control. The ones that are yeah. under our control, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, and I'm happy to spearhead this, and you know, work. Sure. I, just your, your thoughts on the, the document that I gave you, if you have ideas for improvement. Well, unfortunately, it was at the at the at the end of <laughs> all of the rest of it so I did I did go through it and and it's basically I don't have an issue I probably would want to put see some some additions to it but like you said with anything it needs to be tweaked and kind of customized um, to what we have here in uh, the town of East Lamento but certainly um, as a as a starter certainly I think using the same tool to evaluate our employees exactly. is, is also really important um, so, so when did you want to start? Let me ask that. Um, I would like to start now. Okay. So, well, um, can you Deb? Can I ask since you want to start now? Um, can
can I ask that you give us until the next meeting? Yes. To, so that that way, because if you're going to start immediately, I don't want to make any oh, suggestions and then have it. Yep. You have to go back. Yep. So um, I would have just asked if you could give us until the next meeting just to, great. to get this documented. Does she have? Can she email me suggested changes, being that I have the document, or should it go through? I mean, how does that need to work officially? Actually, you have the word document too. I do. Um, I think that it would. My advice would be that they would come directly to me and to put any of the changes together, in sort of a tracked document, and then get that out to the board okay. prior to your next meeting. I, I think if you go directly email yeah, to that's email, right. that's not allowed. I knew it. That's why I asked. <laughs> okay. And your thoughts also. I think it's fine as long as it's limited to managerial personnel under the control of right, the right. board. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is cor correspondence from AT&T regarding a lease. Get there. Yeah, that's an executive session. Correspondence. AT&T has sent you a letter saying that they are having financial difficulties. Uh, for evaluating existing sites that they have with an eye toward attempting to uh, reduce their expense. Um, and so they have sent a letter to the board saying they'd like to uh, uh, adjust or talk with you about adjusting the compensation level that's currently in place for the lease of the tower that they have with the town. and. Um, while reducing the um, annual rate now, extending out the length of time that the lease will be in place and to talk with you about it. Um, I've had some discussions um, with the town administrator and um, would relate to you two things. One, I think that the provision at AT&T is relying on the existing lease to allow them to be able to get out of the lease for change in technology and services is not applicable to this particular situation, number one. <coughs> <coughs> and number two, if they are not going to terminate their lease with the town, to ask you to modify your provisions and terms with them would be a violation of the actual the original bidding process of the 30B, where the agreement was put out to bid to them. So um, their determination is going to have to be whether they wish to try to terminate the lease, and if that happens, then the board would have to make a determination whether or not you wish to let them do that or to... Um, seek to enforce your rights under the lease saying that they don't have the authority under mm -hmm. the provisions that they're doing it. Um, so at this point, my recommendation would be to send them a letter saying do what you got to do, but we, we don't have the authority to alter the lease under the terms you're showing. Okay. What you're asking? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Is that a letter you'd send out? You would? I would send it out if you direct me. <coughs> sure. Question. Thank you. Sorry. Um, last item is just a notice that we have a request for a contract employee to enter into negotiations yep. for a new contract okay. when the current contract expires or before it expires. Could we have the vote on that? On what? On uh, no, for you to send that letter out. For the AT&T? Yeah. We do have to vote that. on that? Hmm? Oh, do we have to vote on that? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you probably you should take a position, but you you don't have to take a vote. You can direct me to send a letter based oh. on oh, the, okay. on the uh, outline that I've given you. Okay. Minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I would make a motion to go to executive session to discuss matters of uh, negotiations and <coughs> also I don't know what the uh, negotiations um, to discuss matters of negotiation uh, with council regarding how to proceed. In connect under the attorney client privilege junction. Okay. <coughs> to return to open session only to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Oh, uh, favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Aye. Yes. Um, <laughs> Selectman Bronski. Yes. Selectman Thorpe. Yes. Selectman Federico. Oh.